sucks. But you hook up a camera like that to something, you know, yeah, to you from, the plug and replug that. This thing's screwing up again. Oh, thing stuck on this. Now try that again. There we, there we are. We are live. Hello, everybody. Got your hookah all churned up. Let me brush this mop for a minute. Narsa, you say hi to everybody on there. Hello, everybody. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are coming to you live from an undisclosed rancho location. Today is... March 13th, 2019, and uh, we welcome you all aboard. Thank you for having us tonight. Today, we want to we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the uh, some of the activities that we went through today. Uh, <laughs> yep. Woke up. I'm declaring Narse my official twink. <laughs> there you go. God, yeah. I stopped. I was at the store today to get a soda, and I saw, I saw the Twinkies. I'm like, holy shit! I gotta have that for Narce tonight. I gotta have the Twinkie for him. There we go. Yeah, burg me up, Narce. Burg me up. There we go. Uh, tonight's script has a nipple. Yeah, he ain't no twink, Gabriel. That's it. Got it. That's it. Good evening, everybody. And nice to see you tonight. You know, we're all in the midst of this. Got a couple things like Narsa said to talk about uh, tonight. Number one, thanks for introducing me to hookah. It was really cool. You know, it was a different kind of experience. I'm sorry your uncle freaks out at the hookah bar. And, hey, bro, you know, it's blowing smoke at me. It was very interesting today to do that. Uh, do the nighting thing with the Twinkie. I dubbed the Twink. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, Jennifer, there you go, honey. The, the real deal with the, the cream-filled Twink. Gabriel said, Miss Narsay in Seattle next time, bro. Yeah, it's hookah in toga. I'm doing good, American United. So I want to thank uh, Narsay for taking the time. It was it was a little bit to set that up, but it was really a lot of fun, wasn't it, to do that? To yeah, that. I had a great time setting that up. It was fun. <laughs> Put yeah. that up his ass. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> uh, I accepted. I was trans probably in the year 2000. I would say was probably it, Vanessa. How you doing, Vanessa? Nice to see you, uh, honey. Um, so then we went out for sushi tonight, which I thought was pretty. Yeah, the sushi was pretty good. Sushi. Extravagant, phenomenal. Yeah, we really laid it on the table, and it was good value on that. Crab. So thank you. California rolls, rainbow rolls, rainbow rolls, California crab rolls, the uh, spider thing, spider that we have. rolls. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not talking about that tonight, Cesar. Good evening, Prepping. How are you? Oh, David Coburn. How you doing, David? 
Wow. Remember David Coburn, Don Chance? Yeah, Coburn, I remember yeah. David Coburn from back in the day. West Virginia. Yep. How you doing, David? And then I think he went down to uh, Kentucky. That's cool. Nice to see you. Nice to see you back, America United. Coburn, I can't believe it. No, we haven't hooked up yet. Uh, <laughs> and just as a subtle reminder, this is Tip Your uh, Monday. You do see the uh, super chat down below if you're so inclined. My one, the moderators do a wonderful job here. The ones that choose to participate in being tipped out as a little thank you one day a month. The golden wrenches are golden. And everything that uh, was raised on all and will be raised on this hangout goes to uh, goes to them. You bought a four bedroom house and a Harley Davidson. Nice, nice, nice. Did you catch Narce Spider and eat it raw? <laughs> no, but Narce has decided to forgo the shack out there, and he's going to be in. Uh, he's sleeping in his nice sleeper tonight. Once a trucker, always a trucker, right? So it feels like home to you. It really does. It really does. Oh, yeah. Uh, pardon me. Else. Yeah. Yeah, I love how you support your mods. Don't Most don't give a hoot about their mods. Well, it's, Cesar, I got to tell you, it's a little difficult to mod this channel at times, and sometimes it's a real shit show, and it's it gets a little out of control, and... What are they telling you? Day two in your shirt. Yeah, day two. <laughs> Who's cat? We got. We do have laundry facilities here, so he's welcome to uh, welcome to do his <laughs> welcome to do, do his laundry. <laughs> I mean, he's not like he's been shoveling shit outside. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just like sleeping, he, eating, he's got a nice smoking, shower. Okay. Yeah, it. I mean, Oda Mays like we put in at least eight hours a day. There you go, down there. So we're all embroiled in this stuff with this road track and the, the Lisa Marie's up for grabs now. This this 1996 road track, and of course, you know Marshall has got this idea that he should be able to buy this road track that Mister X is has, uh, has acquired. And Narsi and I were sitting and talking tonight. We were looking at some of the things on. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Mr. Gabriel. Thank you, sir. Gabriela Garcia. Thank you very much, my friend. Have a good show. I'll see you tomorrow. There we go. Um, yeah, that's it, Juice. And we got to thinking, what is it really? You know, we're talking about a 1996. I had a 1988. Coachman camper van. Marshall has an 89, and Gerald Coates had a 90 originally. The uh, Dino the dinosaur. So we're talking about 96 is six years newer. So, but you're still talking about a 23 year old van. Yeah, a 23 year old van that sat a lot. Yeah, with a lot of dried up components. You know, even though they're not used, you know, from age, age takes a toll on a vehicle. You know. Yeah, and this is this is my beef. This is the thing that irritates me about your uncle. He's all about the configuration of the interior, but he's not all about the durability the build the longevity the equipment that's inside of that maybe the fridge is going to go maybe the microwave sucks maybe the water the generator burn up you know the water heater the Fuse water panels. tank might leak all this stuff do you know what happens you remember chris travels he got this class a motor home he paid seventy thousand bucks for this for this monaco class a he wanted to take it up to can to can to Alaska, so he took it up to the Alcan Highway. And I'm telling you, Narsi, by the time he got it up to Alaska, the thing was shaking apart. You know, all everything was loosened, all the screws and the, the whole yeah. thing it just started to torsion to the point that he got it back to the U.S. And what did he say? I regret I ever bought. 
because the build quality wasn't suited. Build quality was shot. Was shot. We have the same issue in the trucking world. Uh, people will tend to buy cheaper semis, you know, for for cost effectiveness, but then the trucks, you know, rattle themselves apart. Yeah, you know. Anytime you hear torsion, and, and torsion is the twisting where the front of the Class A is in a different plane of movement in the back. Yeah. So you know, got and that thing. just starts to loosen all the uh, connectivity. So what does he go and do? He buys a schoolie, a Bluebird school bus, and he converts that. Why? Because the build quality is i mean that thing's designed Events. to roll over and live right because it's got carrying children it's carrying children it's also got a real good steel frame as opposed to the the fiberglass that we know delaminates you see the bubbles right. in that in that crap how you doing tamara i mean uh, no he's not drinking steak sauce there <laughs> <laughs> what did they say? They said, "Are you drinking steak Stay sauce?" sauce. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he's drinking. Uh, he's A1. drinking Stella Artois. Yeah, A one. Holy shit, that's funny. Um, so I'm 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 saying tonight that you're buying the sizzle and not the steak when you look at that 1996 road trip road trek. I know you have happy. How you doing, Vegas? Fixing having a beer for me. And I want to tell you this, brother, that the layout of an RV is important. A good night's sleep is important. Of course. If you can't sleep well in an RV, you're fucked. Yeah. This was the biggest problem I had in every RV that I had was comfort sleeping. Yeah, just to pass out and be content. You're in the GMC RV. It has the lateral back, so you're sleeping across the back, but it's still tight. You're kind of wedged in, and then you have the jackknife sofa and the coachman's. Well, you got that big dip. That dip. Big, yeah, the big dead space. If you lay on the edge, you break that flip out part of it. And then much. you have, and then you have. Your uncle sleeping on the egg crate foam, but it's still, you know, and then it's got the jungle room in the back, which is not like you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to talk about that. Brandy, how are you, sweetie? So, Narsa and I were talking. Well, I'm this, you know, Dennis, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, he doesn't smell. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, the Tempur-Pedic uh, uh, grand bed. So I don't really know what to tell you except this. You like the configuration because you can put four around a table in the middle. You have the nice bed in the back, which has always been your dream. But I'm just thinking, what do you really, do you really know about the build quality of this rig? Yeah, because he doesn't own one. Do you know how close to replacement some of the equipment is inside? Like this fridge. You know, like the like a fridge. Thousand dollars. Like, yeah, at least a thousand bucks. Thousand or the here, water tank. There. Or the water pump. Or the AC. The insulation. If it and hasn't then, deteriorated from years of heat in the Florida sun. Yeah, and now, you know, the nice thing about the road tracks is they do have the rear AC. They don't have the, what I call the rip and go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the low bridge, <laughs> the low overpass. I wonder how many fucking AC units they collected. <laughs> Thank you, Tamara. We laugh about that, you know. And the other thing is the livability of how many people live in a road track every day. They're not. This, They're is, not. this is an argument that I've had Go with ahead. Tell for them years. Your thoughts on this now. You all have to understand these RV companies do not build these 
vans, class A's, B's, C's, trans vans. They do not build them for full-time living. Airstream, I don't care if you buy the nicest Airstream in the world. They are for what? It's in the name. Camper. You go camping, you go spend the weekend, you go Recreational. Fishing. Recreational. Vehicle. Not house vehicle. It's not an HV, it's an RV. So if you want something that's going to be durable, in my opinion, if you want something that's going to be durable, you're going to have to buy a heavy-duty frame vehicle, E350 and up, and or school bus. I suggest buying the, the GMC van school buses because the internationals, the Bluebird bodies, yeah, the Thomas bodies, yeah. they have no rear suspension. The rear tires and the gearing is only designed to go to 70 miles an hour. You're going to burn diesel. The, the cost of maintenance is too high. You need a vehicle with air suspension in the back. This is how my setup would be. Let me tell you how yeah, I would do go it. Go ahead. Tell them what you, you get would. the biggest Sprinter and or Ford Transit van. Long as they come. You take the suspension out. They have aftermarket air suspension that you can buy. You outfit the rear axle with air suspension to absorb the shake. Because remember, you're going to have this twisting. Torsion. Yeah. All this torsion. torsion. Yeah. Okay. You go to Lowe's and or Home Depot and you have to measure and fabricate all of your own equipment. Get a real sink if you're going to want sink. Get a real shower head. If you're going to put in a tub, get a tub for a house. Because these tubs and these RVs, they're garbage. Crap. They're crap. Marshall broke his and the least of mine right. was broken before I even got it. You know? Yeah. These, these, these are for very light use and or they're designed to be used by children. You know, but I've always said, don't crap where you eat. You can't have a toilet here, and then next to you is a sink and the, the stove top, and then over here in the middle of the floor is a shower and all this stuff. I, I think that part of this lifestyle, you're going to have to take some of your responsibilities as far as cleanliness outside of the van. Get a Planet Fitness membership, take a shower, leave the shower exactly. and all that equipment at Planet Fitness. Do your dishes at Planet Fitness if you have to. You know, do your cooking outside. I take it from someone. Now, for those of you that say, what experience does he have? I live in a semi. I live in a Freightliner Cascadia. That's not even the full size. It's the small, lightweight body. Okay? Marshall's van to me is like, it's like a mansion. You know, this place here, this is like, this is like, well, I'm at the White House. <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> I'm so used to having my dashboard here. The walls are here. My bed is here. The back wall is here. And that's my space. I have my bed in there. I have a fridge that's not an RV fridge. It's a household 110 AC plug-in fridge. I have a 1,500-watt inverter. I have four giant batteries that the semi uses to start itself. I have an APU that keeps the batteries charged so there's no need to idle and pollute the earth. I have a microwave. I have hot plate. You know, and I have an emergency toilet that the two times that I've used it is for outside and away from the truck. No accidents, please. <laughs> so I think I think this lifestyle, I don't think there's a, such a thing as fully self-contained. I think if you attempted to be fully self-contained, you'd have to have a giant Prevost size bus to be comfortable and do it right, which is not going to be efficient. It's not going to be ideal. There's just no way around it. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. Sacrifices must be made. Yeah. So the problem is when you're living in something day to day that's designed for occasional use for maybe one or two weeks a year and a weekend here, or there, two, three weekends. And you put that thing through the paces of uh, using that stove on a daily basis or that fridge is always on month in, month out, month in. It's not, it's they're not just, designed to yeah. run like that. Yeah, how you doing, Kelly? And this is my objection is you look at this road track 210 and you're, you're looking at it like a vacationer. You know, you're looking at it like, man, let's go up to the, let's go up to the Rockies for two weeks. Cool. This thing is going to give you great service, great configuration. But I'm telling you, at the end of the day, it's still a 23-year-old rig. And it's going to have 
those problems and everything is always more expensive on an rv just like on a boat yeah you know it's more expensive than household quality how you doing kev yeah these are in, in reality guys these vans were sold the people at road trek and coachman weren't thinking hmm 25 years from now somebody who impersonates oh, is gonna have to live in this yeah let's design it for that person they're not thinking that they're thinking how cheap they can build them and how much they can sell them for it to make money. And that's all it is. Nobody in 89 ever thought that Lisa Marie would make it this far. I mean, it was not designed by Coachman when they took the uh, E250 and then slapped a boat on top of it. It is like a Boston whale or on top of it. You know, they went to Tracker Marine and just said, look, just give us the fucking face. <laughs> We'll it's, slap it on. On it. it's not designed for that you know and every time that rig sways and uh, you can imagine it's just it's got a good powertrain on it i will say that but i just question you know when you're too over eager for like a something that's 23 years old and i'm just saying hey let's tone it down a bit let's notch it down i mean this afternoon was almost at a fever pitch with this thing you know this it's it's like mousetrap this has got to go down the steps to ball and it's gonna kick the bucket over and you know that the thing's got to come down right I mean, if the old horse, if the old mule hadn't have died on the way to the mine, we'd all be millionaires now, right? I mean, there's a lot of shit has to fall into place before this thing happens. And I'm just now, I'm just now caging Kev. I'm pulling back and saying, whoa, what are we doing here? It's like these dummies at auction that get carried away with a piece of art, right? <laughs> and they're, yeah. they're going to war. And, and then it's I like, shreds itself. like fucking finger paint. <laughs> Right. You want another one I should do to put <laughs> uh you want to see us play naked twister, huh? Kit and cat, that's funny. Good night, Holly. You know, so I'm just I just I'm just pulling back a little bit tonight. You know what I'm saying, Cage and Kev? Maybe we're just over I mean it'd be nice. So that's part one of the story. Part two of the story is does can the Lisa Marie be restored, you know, cost effectively? That's the second part of the equation. And I outlined last month, and I caught the devil for it because everybody thought, you know, and they, your uncle even told you, you know, Rosie's laid out a whole, you know, rebuilding restoration plan for it. I don't know where in the hell that thing went. <clears throat> Where now that thing went? I had that damn thing. I sat that somewhere. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Maybe God mercifully just made it disappear <laughs> from here. I'm not sure. The hell I did with that? I don't know. Let's put it with the dog fart stuff, or where in the hell did that go? I don't know. Anyway, I had that. What is dog fart? Yeah, I'm just joking. That's it. Uh, I keep hearing that everyone keeps saying that dog fart. Dog dude, but... farts. Is that like a bestiality thing? No, it's just uh, it's regular. I guess evidently a regular porn. I don't know. I don't it's a porn. I have no idea. I'm trying to find this damn thing. The people on the side will tell you what the hell it is. In our state, you know? I try to protect you from such things. So yeah, I just don't know what the hell I did with that thing. Anyway, I thought maybe like Georgie had something to do with it. I was like, what, Georgie fart on camera or something? Road Marseille with this, uh, with this community, you know what I'm saying? Uh, anyway, I don't know where the hell it went, but I had a whole thing worked out. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, what do you got? You still got an old suspension and all that. Yeah, the van, all the weight of that van has been sitting on that suspension for yeah. 23 years. Yeah, it's been sitting on that uh, suspension. Screw that, buy new with a warranty and then don't buy someone else's problem. So although I am intrigued with the possibility of seeing what I could make of that, 
like I was told NAR say, I think four weeks to six weeks, I could have that thing looking like it just came out of the, you know, out of the factory in Elkhart, Indiana, by the Amish hands there that uh, put it together. Um, let's see. Instead of putting more money in the lease and read, why do you save the money yeah, for them? Just so you can source all the parts yeah. without waiting. But you that's know? what I'm saying. I mean, are we just kicking over dominoes that shouldn't be kicked over here and just say, well, if this happens, this says I can't, I cannot be. Yeah. <clears throat> Cesar says you're cute, Narcy. Cesar. He's a twink. <laughs> remembers when GMC and Ford designed these vehicles they designed them to bear weight but not to bear weight constantly they exactly. got constant 7,000 pounds on the transmission it's gravity and the torque converter it's gravity right gravity it's takes its toll everything goes to shit eventually everything returns to the ground right yeah, that's an old lady <laughs> you, you sit there long enough 50 years <coughs> tires degrade all of a sudden it's metal in the ground rust takes over eventually that whole thing just maybe right the boat's the still left on top <laughs> <laughs> it was still floating so that's the issue <coughs> of that heavy tits will droop everything droops gravity catches up with everything so now I think to myself, oh, Rosie, do you really want to get involved? Just when you're getting ready to get on the road, just when you're getting ready, that freedom of the road to be able to go, do you really want to now pull back and, and take, take on another project? project. <laughs> there goes your summer and goes spring. Your freedom. And you're sitting under a fucking tree on a 100-degree day <laughs> pulling generators looking at the suspension with flattened springs in the back and you're wondering i really want to send these springs out to be rebuilt reconditioned it's it's just too much hey giovanni yeah this is my roommate uh, this is my financial advisor here <laughs> my spiritual financial and other advisor uh here <laughs> With salt there, everything will rust. So then I think to myself, you find surprise it's way too much to worry really, and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm going to have to jump off of this thing. You know, at best I could do <clears throat> is take the Lisa Murray Park. God, even driving it here would be a fucking nightmare. nightmare. I drove it. I drove it from Florida to Chicago. That was I, I. Those were the worst three days of my life. Seriously, and this is how I. And I drive ten hours a day. I know, you know, and from you know, this is supposed to be luxury driving, comfortable, big floaty RV. After about three hours, and uh, my back is sitting there, and it's talking to my brain, saying, "What? Why? Why are you doing this to yourself right now? How, why don't you just fly?" I mean, I'm picturing as much my, as I hate flying. I'm picturing myself in the. And it's dusty, and it's, if the air doesn't move, and the walls are I'm stale. Picturing myself in the swamps of Louisiana. Hey, what the fuck you doing, man? Front <laughs> there, eh? <laughs> we got to fix this motherfucker up for you. Ain't no problem now. Yeah, they take it down to Junior's garage. We'll be hiding some fucking gators, man. We'll be back on Monday. Check that motherfucker. Yeah, can you no imagine the deal. fucking engine blowing up on it? Oh, take it to a repair shop, man. Right? So let's assume I have the harrowing trip. Definitely be viral video because everybody's watching live stream to see if that fucker explodes going over, <laughs> going over the, you know, climbing yeah. the hills, you know? Yeah. Nor say I got the pedal to the metal, man. It's just ain't going to make it up. Start going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How you doing, Jan? And uh, hey, how you doing, uh, Debbie? Nice to see you, sweetheart. And I just think to myself, okay, let's suppose I get it out here. And now I've, 
lost a, two years of my life with fear and white knuckles and, you know, and get it out here. It's got to sit here till fall or winter, you know, because I absolutely refuse to give up my travel plans for summer, for spring and summer. So <clears throat> no different. Cobra John says no different than other nomads that have bought. Trend. Look, I like I dig buying junk and fixing it up. But there comes a point in your life. You ain't no kid on a creeper underneath, you know. That's uh, hard. With with uh, That's taxing differential fluid dripping down on you and rotten seals on the back of engine seals and all that. <clears throat> now, right. Cobra John says, travel and stay on motels long-term cheaper. There's a lot to be said for that because we traveled 7,636 miles in 17 days. We stayed at Hyde Houses people's houses and i thought at the end of it all we spent about five grand on that was pretty good but we were really booking we were eating well when you were parked and sleeping in the van what did you do for heat and ac just idle for what for heat and ac for temperature control well we never slept in the van one night we were always in hotels you just, I have slept. I've done many overnights in the van, but not on this trip with Jen. Okay, because oh. she could not bear that, you know, with her with her MS. <clears throat> How did you get your Class B? I don't have a Class B. I, Davy, I had a 1974 GMC RV that I bought from Jerry Garcia out in the Central Valley. That was in the white knuckle ride getting that home. Okay, restored that, flipped that for a good profit. Then I bought a 1988 Coachman camper van I bought in Reno. Guy tells me how good it is. I get up to Reno. The guy's like, oh, by the way, the charging system doesn't work on the fucking battery. I'm like, great. I'm 230 miles from home, and I have no charging system for the battery. Luckily, I brought a hot battery with me. It made it just to the rancho and then quit. The, you know, the juice, the juice was gone. So... <clears throat> Yeah, JK No Cal spent seven thousand bucks to get to Maine and back to California for three people and food. And he was hell he was hauling a big of a, a hell of a big I don't think it was a travel trailer or something that he had on there. Yeah, Jerry Garcia. You can see the video. I mean look like Jerry Garcia in that damn thing. Okay. So you know, that's the best I can do is if you know, like I said, getting it out of here, getting it out here would just be a, it, it'd be like, I don't know, it'd be epic to try to get that thing across the Great Plains and you're climbing the whole way. And I think it would make it here. I think it would make it, but Jesus, it's a breaking, you know, it's just. You'd be thinking about it the whole time. I'd be thinking about it the whole time. You know, I got a boat on the top. <laughs> Every time the I'm, alternator and it needs replacing that alternator sure. and all that stuff. Well, maybe so, Davey. I don't know what the plan is. Yeah, Gigi's like, I want a wide body, longest class B they have. Well, that would be like a leisure travel or a, a pleasure way, something like that. Get a used teardrop. See, I like to be stealth when I go Cobra John. You know, but I do have a nice, you know, Narce rode in the panel. Yeah, van. I rode it's in nice. the panel van today. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice. The bed is way bigger than Marshall's. I can tell you all yeah. that. You know, it sits up high. It's and it doesn't nice. have a fucking dip. Yeah, it's nice. In the middle. And it's stealth. You look at it. We went today into the where they were repairing the burn sites. Yeah. People thought we were like, they're like contractors yeah. or something. Nobody thought, you know, what's in the back of this van. They just saw us riding and. Yeah, that's People it. waving, like, is this guy bringing us the roof tiles or, you know? Yeah, I think so. I'm thinking for my initial trip, I got what I need. I can sleep comfortably in that. Good old Planet Fitness. Just, you know, go go take care. You're getting it's cleaned It's nice. Up. You have an external shower. Yeah. You don't have to worry about clogged pipes or Hey, Jolene, how pumps. you doing, sweetie? Mm, good to see have you. Have all the hot water you want. You want a hot water run for two hours. Just sit there. Exactly. Read a book in the shower. Exactly. And you I know. have a little camp stove, and I got a table, 
and you just set that thing up or go to a park on a picnic table and you can cook one meal a day no big deal you have an ice chest you just throw some ice blocks you gotta get some ice once in a while you're good to go if you're doing a lot yeah. of driving you just got a 12 volt thermoelectric cooler yeah they sell them at walmart for 100 bucks coleman yeah they're huge well, I get into the cigarette ladder and keep it rolling. Yeah, you can rent a Class C for a week. You can. I'm good. I'm good. I hope you're doing good, Jolene. I got to stop by your chat, honey. I'm, yeah, I'm honestly, that's the best idea. Yeah. Just run them. You already have the house. Yeah. You have a permanent actual residence. In your situation, the best thing I would do is just rent one. Yeah. So I'm. Um, so for me. Don't worry about maintenance. No. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I am going to initially go in my van, Cobra John, because the big problem I've had is that I'm not finding anything local that's decent at a price. Even a 2010 Road Trek 210, they want sixty thousand bucks plus tax here, Don't which is fucking high. Property tax. Sales tax is ridiculous out here. Eight and a, eight and a half percent. Oh, you all don't okay. pay property tax on your vehicles? Yeah, I pay no, no property tax on the vehicles. No, no personal property taxes in California. Okay, so I'm looking at another five thousand bucks to drive off the lot. So you know, tax, tax, they're high as hell, Gigi. So I'm thinking to myself, I already got the van. I built out the back like Jan Adams did it as under storage. I can keep everything under the bed and just hit the road Set and the not road. worry about it 24 miles to the gallon 24 miles to the gallon right four cylinder you can get a service at any dodge dealership yeah you're not gonna have people turn you oh we don't work on rvs yeah. they don't know what it is yeah yeah let's convoy i'll bring my well we'll do that tasha that'd be outstanding i'd love to convoy with you that would be great but I'm saying I crawl in there at that and the RC's like, oh wow, you got a privacy screen in the back. Yeah. Put yeah, that thing big down. Slide down. Big shape. slide down. Walks all the light up. I got a blackout curtain in the front. That's it. Really hot night. Just check into a motel. This you bed know? in this van is bigger than the bed of my truck. Yeah. It's the whole width wide. The weather's beautiful. Finally here, Jolene. Finally, after the most brutal winter. It is stealthy, Jan. It is. And as much as somebody might like to claim it is, the coachmen aren't really that stealthy. when they They're not. Them. There's yeah. nothing stealthy yeah. about it. Yeah. Even if you took all the stickers off and painted it a different color, people are going to say, why does yeah. this van have windows? What's this? What are all these little trap doors? They don't know what the, the compartments. They all have their own little thing, you know, electrical cord, water fill. They're just like, yeah, what's all these holes? It looks weird. Check out Jan Adams, Jan and Bruce Adams Van Adventures. She put up good quality videos. She's been everywhere. She's seen everything, and she's done it from a built-out van, okay, with a queen bed in it. Never complained about comfort or anything. So I know it works. So I'm thinking to myself, the best I can do in this equation with this Road Trek 210 plus the Lisa Marie Plus throw in two horses too <laughs> for the for the deal. The best I can do is it best just bring it out here and park it. You know, and make it a long term project. I love Baton Rouge, Jolene. If you're gonna go down to Baton Rouge, if you're gonna live there, I will look you up and you, me and Savage, we'd be fixing to go out and have a good time. Yeah, you go to campgrounds and stuff, so it works out. It works out great. It works out great. You know. So I'm with Narsay. Is the 96 Road Trek 210 worth all this? Nah, no. It's too hyped. It's, it's way too hyped. It's now been officially too hyped. You know, and uh, overrated. It's overrated. So I don't. Barely. I just think something nicer might come along around here that will be sleeker i don't want the boat on the top anymore of the thing <laughs> so i just have to say that oh hell no deb i'm not gonna forget you when you're when i'm in louisiana are you kidding me honey 
You got to be kidding me. I'm not going to forget you. I think you're up in Shreveport, around Shreveport, Louisiana, up that way. Yeah. Yeah, Vacaville has a lot of nice RVs. Yeah. That's right. Vacaville also um, down in Hayward, California, has a lot too. All the older Class Bs are overrated. And I tend to agree with that. So I'm like, Narsa and I are sitting around the table tonight, and I'm just because he's 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 very straightforward. He's been an observer. He's been here in the RV community, uh, at least involved in it since as long as I have. You don't remember the van I had? Yep, I remember the van you had. And the Chrysler went, Voyager minivan. Yeah, but you went through your uncle's. Dodge when that burned up in the shop and all that bullshit. And yeah. when he had a teardrop, we had a little bumper toe pull. bumper pull. That so, was that was drafty junk. Yeah. The Dodge van. I mean, imagine if he was living that Dodge van full time and it would have gone up in flames like this. Yeah. Okay, now where do you live? Oh, well, insurance will pay for it. All right, you know how many weeks it takes for insurance to kick in? Long time. They have to they have to do investigation. They what they have to Try to sue the people that the mechanic shop. It's a big, and meanwhile, you need to pay for a hotel. There's a lot of stuff to pay for. Narsa is a good one to ask on that. Brendan said, "What's your opinion on the ProMaster 2500 high top fan?" You I drove, I drove yeah. a 2500 and a 3500 for when I used to deliver parts, short and long wheelbase. They got a great engine, 3.7 Pentastar, a lot of power, front wheel drive, heavy duty, but. You know, they have, like, rivets and stuff on the top when they bolt them all together. They work themselves loose and pop off, and you got to get it resealed at the dealership warranty. They have a lot of wiring issues. Okay, honey, take care, Jolene. And uh, they're noisy. The seats are very hard. You know, I had a – in both vans, they had that, that metal door little divider yeah. cage thing. Yeah. yeah, And because you have that installed, you can't recline the seat back. It's not ergonomically friendly for a driver. You may be driving around town a couple hours or something, it's fine. But if you're going to be putting on some miles, it's not, you know, and they're top heavy. Not top heavy, it's the wind. Yeah. You know, you get bullied a lot by the wind. Yeah. You know, you'd be wrestling with the wheel. You know, it's not sleek. It's not aerodynamic. It's loud. Yeah. And Cobra Don, Cobra John, I did do a build out of my little pro master i did set it up so i could have a lot of i had much more under i have much more under i can carry much more in that than the coachman can carry i guarantee you that okay i have a portable generator two burner stove that i use and i've always as many of you know you've seen me out there boondocking and i will be boondocking um Probably, well, not next Tuesday, but sometime soon in April, I'll begin boondocking again. And you've seen me do hangouts from uh, boondocking sites and all that. So I guess this is just my way of saying I just, I really don't see it. You know, I just don't see that level of work in my future when I have something that only has 40,000 miles on it. And Nothing breaks down on it. Yeah, it's I, I have a bulletproof. shitty inverter, maybe, but I have a little uh, generator, two thousand watt generator that I can carry with me. That I have. So, if I in all reality, if you take the passenger seat out, you know how much more space you'll free up. Yeah, I have the Pro Master City. Yeah, pull yeah. the passenger seat out. That's where you know, put your you know your generator there next to you when you're driving at nighttime. Take it out. There's not a damn thing to fix on it. That's exactly yeah. right. There is not a and damn thing. There's less thing. to go wrong. Steel wheels. You don't have to worry about wheels getting bent. Exactly. So Jan says if it gets too cold or too hot, we go into motel and call it good. That's the option you have when you're a ham and egger. Is you can pull out your plastic and say, hey, I want to get a room for the night. Domatic fridge. I've never had any issue with cooking or doing anything. Sprinter 170 for conversion. They love the Sprinter vans. They put them on Mercedes and uh, Dodge. 
what do you think is you were talking about sprinter if you were going to do anything you would sprinter, have a, yeah. sprinter is nice they all these vans are nice but if you're going to go diesel it's going to be higher maintenance you're going to pay a lot more for fuel and then another problem with the new diesels they have this def which is thanks to california stan def is now you have to have it on your diesel vehicle if you're going to be in cali if you're going to be anywhere near here and uh there's no way to order it without the def there are companies that you can go to that will remove the def system but still keep the equipment on there to make it look legit but if they mess up then they trash your whole system yeah i'm with so. you dory lane i like the, i like the sprinters too you know, I've heard I've heard mixed feedback on Mercedes Sprinter vans, which surprises me. You know, because using the Mercedes platform, but it's it's building it out, and and you're still talking about 140,000, 149,000 do for those things. So, if I were to do it, it would be dually 2,500 and up, preferably 3,500. Guess the new yeah. Ford Trans is a six cylinder. Yeah, I'm gonna get you another drink. I'm gonna get a drink. So it's why I wanted to talk. Narsay's like, whoa, let's off the road. Let's calm down a little bit on this thing. Let's put the brakes on. Hyped, put the brakes on this shit. Look, it's a it's a '96. Okay, chill. There's a zillion of them out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I appreciate Narsay saying that. You just trouble. You get such a for this stuff. Yeah. And the thing is, he's cutting it so close with his finances, he'll end up de depleting his finances and then run into a major breakdown. Now what? You know? I just do not feel like doing that. Uh, doing that work. Thank you. You know, doing that work. Uh, no, I don't know. We've been talking about this, um, Gigi. We've been talking about. Evidently, there is a two thousand. There's a ninety-six road track two ten. It's floating around somewhere. Somewhere. That Marshall tells me that he has watched this thing for years, and it's like, now is it for sale, or who owns it, or I got to buy it, and uh, Rosie, you got to take the Lisa Marie, and I'm just... I think it's a sentimental value to it for him, the fact that he's known about it for so long. Yeah. But if he's thinking he's going to get away from his... I his, love the Rialta. Yeah. I think if I think he's so stressed out about having to constantly worry about a breakdown, he's thinking the '96 is going to buy him peace of mind. I got news for him: it's just going to be a whole another can of worms. They all are. Yeah. You can go buy a car brand new, but you can go buy a van brand new, and it could be a lemon. What do you do? Fight with the warranty? Tasha the Rialto is actually my number one choice. For an RV, due to the sleekness, you know what the Rialto is. Oh yeah, like the Euro oh, fiber guys, yeah, they're just, construction. They're Six just cylinder. They're just they're so aerodynamic. They just are, they're they're sweet. timeless. They're timeless, you know. And um, yeah, that's it. I go to bed. You're live and now. I wake up. You're live. Well, we just came on about 20 minutes ago just to talk about this. Uh, is this Road Track 210 96 even worth it? Welcome aboard. Um, new doesn't really buy a guarantee for not breaking down. I mean, Dory Lynn will tell you warrant. She did warranty work on trucks for, um, and she and they just, you know, you're always fighting. Yeah, just want the floor plan with the single bed in the back. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Let's see. I got a jug of beer today. Every vehicle breaks down there here and breaks down here and there. Well, good thing you got that jug of beer. <laughs> RV Davy. Good thing. 
You got to have a good income. That's right, Cobra John, because this is a recreational. It's not. It's, it's not like boating, a, jet skiing. Yeah, it's a hobby. It, it's a hobby, and it's not designed to be. It's like Nar saying, "I said it's not designed to be in full time." These rigs are not designed. So you're always chasing the heat or the cool. I've got to get the hell out of Florida, bro. I'm I'm roasting yeah, down. Shit, like it's February, that. man. You know. And then I'm going to see it, JK. And then you go to Chicago, and if you don't have AC, you're still going to roast like a mofo. It ain't no, it's no paradise in summertime. Yeah. Well, Lake Michigan. I mean, you live there. Oh, yeah. It gets yeah. hot in Chicago. It's hot, hot as hell. Terrible. How you, how you doing, cute kitty? Hell, I remember people were dying of heat in Chicago 10, 15 years ago. They were dropping like flies with the heat wave. Yeah. Warning, so, don't go outside. Yeah. Stay hydrated. Yeah, Tasha said it's hot down here for the time of year. We had zero winter. Yeah, you didn't have, you had one cold, maybe one or two cold snaps, something like Talking that. Talking about one or I 80 is shut down <laughs> from Wyoming to Nebraska. Yep. 700 miles of interstate. No go. Not even chain law, it's just a no go, period. No go. They just put that gate thing up, and that's it. That's man. it. That's it. Ain't nobody going on the interstate. That's what I try to tell people, Jan. These are recreational. I don't care whether it's a Class A, a Class B, or Class C. <clears throat> you better always put money aside for the next one. After you know yeah. five years, you better move it on to somebody else. So you know. Um. Well, there's a lot of traffic juice moves along I-80 in uh, Nebraska and all. Th I mean, I've seen a tremendous uh, truck traffic on I-80 compared to I-70 <clears throat> up there. I mean, Elvis is now willing to sell the release and rate. Look, I would pay $2,500 to it, Ujiro. No problem. I would pay it. I would buy that's right, Nicole. If they were made to live in, they'd be a hell of a lot more expensive. They would be built like tanks. Okay, like you were talking about the buses. What was the bus frame that you were talking about? Not the Bluebird, not the... Uh, yeah, not the Bluebird yeah. or Thomas full-size internationals. None yeah. of those. They have ones that are by GMC or Ford Econoline. It's a van front end, van cab. But the body of the bus part is still constructed like a full-size bus. Yeah. You still get the heavy-duty metal steel construction with the metal floors, but because it's not so long, you don't you're not bearing so much weight. Well, you woke up to a tree on your house, John. Good God! Hey, Boo, how are you? It's okay, Boo. But see, that's what you really need. You know, you got the nice big doors that open up on the side. You grab the little handle. I think now they're electric. You just yeah, push I eighty across open. the number eighty five ninety for three hundred miles. Yeah, you get windows all around. <laughs> Elvis is trashing who, Carlos? Trashing me? Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> Jesus, you know. He doesn't know what you're talking about. Fun living over there, and well, and, I'm uh, sure the trolls are always you talking about that tonk that junk that ninety six two ten and all that shit. A burnt toast, California. Yeah. The dorky Berkeley sweater on. I wish I had a Berkeley sweater on. We could match right now. Well, I got one if you want to put it on. But uh, you're fine with your Harley uh, <laughs> shirt. So, yeah, he ain't trashing me. I know he's, he's not. But I would definitely buy the twenty five hundred. I'd wire the money out today. I wouldn't care. You know, set it aside a while till April when I can come down and grab it. That's the bottom line. So, I know that Jamie Lynn. Thank you. That's just Carlos being Carlos. Um, shuttle ball saw the drive line retarded, which helped with braking. That's nice too. I like drive line braking for sure. My problem with the coachman sometimes coming down the hill and those brakes are a little, uh, it's a lot, 9,000 pounds on, <laughs> on the E250 braking system. And they don't do anything to beef that up at all. I mean, that's just, that's it. That's it. Um, you know, Colleen, I don't know. I just think you're going to be disappointed on this thing. I would have to agree. If you get yourself all excited on this deal, I'm afraid that uh, I'm afraid that you're going to 
<clears throat> Why would they troll him when they can troll me, Carlos? It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So. My thoughts, if you're going to live in a van, you need a class C or maybe an A for the room to get up and walk around. But they got to be stationary. You can't be riding these things all over. Like I said, Jan, you saw Chris Travels take his Monaco on the Alcan, and the whole thing just shook apart. Okay? It wasn't designed for that duty. was not designed for that duty. That's my bottom line. <laughs> Plus, I stand by my initial thing like Narse said. This 96, eh, you're only buying a layout on the inside. Yeah. you don't. It's like you're basically saying, I don't give a shit what other problems there might be. I like this layout so much I'm willing to just Eat take a shot. Failure. I'm not willing to take a shot like that. I'm not willing to take a shot like that. That's my bottom line. CRA is not good for rough roads. That's true. Four by four. Yeah, then you, then you can really get fancy and get you a, an, uh, an F-350 pickup truck with a fiberglass off-road. For All this is baloney. I don't care if you get them all. I don't care if you live in a Brinks money truck. It's going to break down. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you still look good coming out of there with your. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Chris Diamond walked away. Mr. X now left for the <clears> option, <throat> keeping or selling for profit, which shall be the outcome. But you stay tuned. Well, look, if Mr. X has his mitts into it, and having met Mr. X and spent time with Mr. X, you know he's got that profit, Mo. You know he's he's. Licking his chops, brother. Mm, you know, half an on Italian that. Beef. so yeah, this is here you go, Jessica. I made Mar I made Narse my honorary twink uh, tonight. There we go. There you go. There it is. The twink chat. There it is. There you go, Tasha. Don't be a twink, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Do not be a twink. Yes, exactly why RV Davy. That's exactly why Chris and G went to the uh, went to the schoolies. Because even though it's a Bluebird, it's still of a better build quality. It's a diesel, and that thing's going to go forever. Okay, and the build quality the build quality is good. Yeah, Mister X is certainly going to make his profit out of that, and you know. But what I think is the upside, if you come out and apologize to Mr. X and make good, yeah, that's a good thing for the long haul, you know? That's what's really important. That's what's really important. Yeah, that's what's really important. Well, I think we don't know that quite for sure, Terry. Eh? I mean, not for sale at this moment doesn't mean tomorrow. It's, uh, you know. Yeah, just incredible. Flips beautiful RVs. Yeah. So what are the other topics that we got set up for tonight since we have everybody's um, attention? Keeping it real with Narsay here about Narsay developing his uh, YouTube channel. Now, one big advantage, that, and we were talking about this tonight, Narsay, it's another thing, Nar it's kind of hot and cold on this. You know, I was thinking, ah, do I want to get gear? Do I want to pursue this thing? And I'm telling him, always be a minimalist when it comes. Because I said, it's in it's in the eye. It's in here, not the gear. Right? Remember that, Mar Nar saying? You're going to have to pad that thing. It's in here, not the gear. That's exactly it. Because the instinct is, oh, my, I got the savage. You know, I got the Galaxy 7, so maybe I need to upgrade. No, you don't. You need to force yourself to use what you got and start making videos, you know. You can you don't have stabilization, but you can stabilize it yourself, you know. And the big advantage Narse has when thinking about a channel is, bro, you go everywhere. Yeah, I'm literally in a different place. You get an hour day. or two downtime at night, you could easily... 
go off someplace. Go do a get huge a, somewhere in downtown New Jersey. Yeah, you have ask trucker nar say, you know, people ask you questions and you right sit on there. The street. Right on the street, or as people say, hey, you're standing in front of this truck stop. Hey, you guys always ask me, being a trucker, what X, Y, Z. Nar say, explain what this is. Are there still lot lizards today? Have you ever gotten laid in a truck stop? You know, you have to ask Nar say, session. I mean, doing content. Yeah, that's cool, Marshall. That's great. Glad to hear it, brother. <clears throat> but you're in a great place to do content. Yeah. You know, everywhere you go, everywhere you go, you can do that. And Marshall, our big agreement, let me, let's me let back up a little bit because I want to just let you know, we don't know if the 96 is worth it the road track 210 because you're talking about a 23 year old rig and we're not sure if that's worth it well i don't know who that is vegas uh barbie because it ain't this guy he'll tell you he's too boring to have a felony <laughs> He's like, holy kid, he's <laughs> – but, yes, he's very logical, and I think that he could also bring a different dimension to to it. Yeah, why does he hard on this – why does he hard on for this – well, that's what I want to say. Yeah, it's not what you think, but you don't know what the market is for these things, you know? <laughs> So, what do you think, Nar, say about a channel? You think you just bring some content? I think I'm to going to bring some content, but I'm going to switch it up. Even though I'm, you know, I, I know I am a driver, but I'm. That's not going to be trucking related. There are already a lot of truck driving channels out there. Um, I was kind of thinking about doing what you were doing along, like you know, where you just choose to random neighborhoods and. You know, people just come up like, you know, like the guy that wanted to do the wheelie for the video. Yeah. Like you yeah. got people willing to volunteer to, to make, make content, content for you. you. Exactly. It's exactly. like it's like effortless. It's all it's amazing. You know, they see the camera, they see the selfie Good stick, and they're like, coach. they want their five minutes of fame. And if they're willing to put in the work, you show me the great editing. Yeah. Uh, app. I'm gonna show you download. tomorrow what you can do with that. I'm gonna show you exactly using your camera. Tomorrow we got a lot yeah. of content coming too because we have to go to camera store. Yeah, the, and plus uh, I'm tripod. backed up on today's stuff when we went We're out. We're backed to show up people. on today's stuff. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get the hey, make how you doing? We'll get that stuff done. But I'm saying I would like to see Narse put content up because he goes places and uh, so many damn places in this country. And it's not all truck stops all the time. You might drop a load in downtown, I don't know, let's pick a city, Philadelphia. Dallas. He's sitting around, he's in downtown Philly waiting to go. And he's like, hey, this is an interesting neighborhood. I'm just going to chooch around this warehouse district a little, you know, for a little bit. I think that would be pretty cool. Get out and get some exercise. Yeah, and for fifth, traveling to 50, I'm not financing anybody. Yeah, I got the DJI gimbal. I have that. It's really nice. I've been using that. But I can't use it for Oakland because I'm shooting for six hours. And if it's uh, camera, I have to be able to have an external power supply. Uh, green tea blowjobs. Jeez. <laughs> but I just, I'm going to disagree with, uh, I'm going to disagree with Marshall. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. It still has a little bit of a, what I call the slight bounce to it. Yeah, $0.99, cent, $99 is perfect. Yeah. I'm not giving him anything, uh, JK. I'm not putting any finance uh, in there. The drawery days were epic, the rancher guy. Yeah, that's right. I don't, I got to fund my own shit. I don't have money to, you have to do the ninja walk. Yeah. I don't have money to put in 
a ninja walk and get me killed in these neighborhoods <laughs> doing that. What I the hell's a ninja walk? I guess it's like little baby steps or something, like tiptoeing. Somebody could just, somebody could just kill you, you know, out there. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a finance person for this. I'm not a finance person for this. I guarantee you, I'm not finance jack. Okay. But if the Lisa Marie was up for twenty five hundred, yeah, I would, I would do that, you know. Yeah, Shannon was on those videos. I don't know, Mika. Do you think it's worth it, Mika? You think it's worth it? Yeah, the YouTube celebrity and stuff over there. For me, I'm not spending any. I mean, I'll I'll buy the lease if the Lisa Marie is for sale for twenty five hundred dollars sold. Okay, I'll buy it. Okay, sold. That's not even an issue. But you better be prepared to see that rig park for a while because that thing ain't going anywhere. How did you clean the cushions in your van with the rug doctor? Yeah, I, I bought a a little Bissell steamer. I just did it, did it myself, and I just took out this container, container, filthy, dirty water. When I just, it took eight, 20 times, it was still dirty as fuck. Every time I, you know, it was unbelievable. <clears throat> well, I don't agree, Jan. It's very, you know, those those toilets are a dime a dozen to. Uh, put in but I would reconfigure and do a whole build out but I don't want to go down there that irritates people it makes people mad and all that I just sit it here and park it okay I travel in my own van but I'll change it to the Colonel Parker <laughs> you know <laughs> Lisa Marie's gone man it's Colonel Parker woo woo that's it well, uh, elbow seventy three thousand miles on a three fifty one five point one. I don't know. I've still got a lot of my still. You could still easily pop another seventy five thousand miles on that. And five point eight liters. Yeah, it's a Cleve. Yeah, five point eight to three fifty one. It's it's a legendary Cleveland. It's three speed. Oh, do a van burning. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, Jessica, I'm going to have to invite Jessica Jennifer to fly out. And she can hold the golden torch. It's be like the burning man, the burning <laughs> van, the burning <laughs> van festival. Only if you wear a bikini, Jessica Jennifer, when you're doing it, you know. Um, no, I think he's kept the, I think he's kept the oil changed in that i mean the winds are i'm i'm just i'm tired tonight yeah the five point the five point eight i wouldn't deal with it me personally if i bought it the only thing it would be used for in my opinion trips to the beach well i'm not so. looking to change it i'm not getting rid of my van re i'm keeping my van to travel with. i'm doing that Yeah, Oda May says that people would donate twenty five hundred for you to buy it and have a van burning party. Uh, yeah, well, that's true, Jan. Yeah, well, I think he's I think he's done some basic maintenance on that. When you can make more money burning it, it ain't worth it. I mean, uh, Mika Reynolds has seen this thing for years on a daily basis. <clears throat> but I think if for nothing else, just to show people, I would do it just to show people what it could be. You know, I'd tighten every damn bolt up, replace every lock washer. Got that thing. Do yeah. a really nice build out on the inside. Put a nice composting toilet in. 
don't really need a shower in an RV. I mean, like we were saying, you, you go to Planet Fitness. Sit Co there two hours under the hot water and read a book. Gerald, don't have to worry about a water heater going out. Gerald, Gerald Coates does not shower in his rig. I don't shower in mine. You know? I take a shower every day, sometimes twice a day. I never took a shower in the GMC or the coachman because the damn coachman had a busted shower. Yeah, they're little. crap. They're all. <clears throat> that's weak stuff. Yeah, that's it, Juice. That's, that's my downfall. Yeah, what is it, Alan? Yeah, the band's got some bad juju. <laughs> I'll have to have uh, Father Dennis, Dennis from the parish come down and get rid of the juju on that. Uh. <laughs> Hi, Rosie. What do you got yourself into now, old girl? Hmm? You want me to what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Nicole. Yeah, you joined a gym. You joined Planet Fitness. Okay, there are many areas without planet, not cities. I'm not going out to the countryside traveling. I'm strictly urban boondocking, man. I'm not going, I'm not, you're not going to see me at a state park. You're not going to see me some nature preserve, anything like that. Well, I would too. I mean, mine came pre-cracked, RE. I mean, he's, they just degrade. The plastic was so shitty for these tubs and stuff. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Starve those bed bugs out, right? So, yeah, I just I don't feel like doing the conversion van. Yeah, you might might be able to raise twenty k to see that thing flaming up on the back lot here. What do you think, Narcy? Parking next to the old G thirty, parked right around the yeah. corner here. Now, but I got that big fucking piece of land just roll that baby like the burning van festival <laughs> have torches all around that lights like this you know the sky on search lights in the in yeah. the sky oh man that would be epic cinematic moves you know shit that'd be pretty cool da <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, for your viewing pleasure. The Lisa Marie goes up in dun, 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 smoke. Thank you, Alan D. Anything tonight is for the benefit of the moderators. It's been a very remunerative day for them today, and thank all of you for that. Um, yeah, Marshall, I'm going to give you a link because I want to ask you. You keep telling me about market price and stuff like Why that. Is it, what does Humpty Dumpty mean? He keeps saying Humpty I don't Dumpty. know. I don't. I don't care about that. I care about the band. I don't. That's between you and him. I want to get down on that. Just my final thoughts on the van thing tonight. You want to sell the thing for twenty five hundred? It's sold. That's a done deal. Because it's going to cost me what? Would say six hundred bucks to get that thing out to at least driving or shipping. Drive. Driving. 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 Be over a thousand. Yeah, I mean, what are we talking about? We are. Oh yeah, eight miles to the gallon. Now. We where did the I drove it? It was twelve hundred miles from our house to yeah. What's going Chicago, on, Marshall? And that was about five hundred. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah, let me uh, let me turn the volume up here. Hold on, man. My volume is kind of low, isn't it? Yeah, I got it. I don't see the green thing coming up. Yeah, no, I'm no. here. You can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I just don't see my green lines coming up. I hear you, you know. So yeah, you want it? It's sold. You got twenty five hundred if you want it. That's it. So you know. Well, no. What's what I'm trying to explain to you is that um, the things that are out on the market, it's not what it's not what you think it's worth. It's what the market bears. So in other words, I might think that the Rancho is worth a hundred thousand dollars but the market thinks it's worth over a half million dollars 
that's the same thing with RVs or anything else in life. It's not what you think it's worth. It's what the market thinks it's worth. But yet you want me to, but yet you want me to believe Mr. X somehow magically got something from what the market didn't think what it didn't think it was worth. So, you know, I'm not sure. You know, we're missing some parts of the equation. Uh, we're missing well, some parts. Well, if if you see these rigs and you know that I can you go to eBay and, and click on sold listings of road trick two tens and you can see that people are paying anywhere between fifteen to twenty five thousand for these rigs. It's not again, it's not what people are it's what it's what informed people that are informed about and what the market is the market demand and the market bearing. So I'm getting my I wanna look this up on eBay. I wanna see that's what it boils down to. It's the same thing with uh, classic cars. Look at uh, Barrett Jackson, Meekum Auto Auctions, and look at what these vehicles are bringing and stuff. So you can go to eBay right now and, 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 and do a screen share. I'll show you how to do it, and you can see what – don't take my word for it. Take the uh, market word for I'm it. I'm just looking on my phone real quick here. Let me just see something. We're going to punch in 1996. I know they're good. I mean, I know they hold their value. Could you unplug and replug that yeah. again, Arthur? Yeah. Yeah, one second. You want eBay and do a screen share, and people can actually get uh, – can um, – that's the best way to do it and stuff to show people and stuff. That's you got to go to the eBay advanced tab and click on, uh, um, and yeah, I'm just looking, uh, have an RB trader. Well, yeah, you have to look at, uh, uh, I won't let you look by 210. You'll have to put road trick and say, uh, I don't think you can. I don't know if you could put a keyword 210 or not. Okay. Well, let's go on eBay for a minute. So I'm not, I'm just saying that you think you know this thing inside out, but you know, is the thing driven anywhere or has it just been parked? And, uh, you know, I just know that the rig has been parked for years. It probably hasn't been driven for five years or more. Hmm. Hmm. Five years of flood sitting in the engine. I'm just thinking of dry seals, you know. Dry seals. So dry starts. Let's see. Nice it's and dry. 2009, 39, 2006, 34. There's not really much older on eBay right now, but. Well, you have to look up previously sold listings. You got to go to the tab. Okay. All you know right. How to do it on the laptop? You got to go to what the you got to go to the advanced tab and click. Uh, okay. Uh, you got to go – if you could do a screen share, it would be easier and stuff. To All right. Hold on one minute. Hey, Vinny. Let me see. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm willing to keep an open mind and look at stuff. But if something hasn't moved for a few years, but I'm not, I'm not going to dump one. I'm just, I'm just looking up. Not eBay. If you go do a screen share, to, if I can see what you're looking at. Let's see. Two. What do you got? Nine, 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 six. Road Trek. Well, we made the Road Trek 210 from 1996 all the way down to probably the 80s, but I've never seen one of the 80s. Probably uh, another go all the way down to 91. Yeah. But you have to click on the Advanced tab, and you've got to click on where they say uh, – Sold yeah. listings. Yeah, I'm looking for the advanced tab. Can you do a screen right. share so I can see what? Yeah, just give me a second. Here. Did you want half of this? No, I'm good. You do that. I'm just looking for the advanced tab. I don't know. I didn't want to. Oh, here it is. Okay. Here it is. Sold yeah. listings. Here we go. Exactly. Then you gotta, you gotta just don't type in the year. Well, I mean, you could type in ninety six, ninety five, ninety four, 
the cool oh, one is the road truck let's two ton popular. Let's see if there is a ninety six just for shits and giggles. Let's see if there is one. It's sold here. Yeah, well they got a coach house, but I don't see any ninety six recently sold of that. Yeah. I'll just put Road Track 210. Let's see what that yields. Okay, this is all sold. Yeah, I don't see uh, not much out there, Marshall. Well, there's plenty. If you, I've seen them there. They're 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 on eBay. You just have to uh, okay. find them. There's a lot of them that are sold. That. Um, okay, Road Track. You just have to put in a road trek 210 popular. Or you could... Not at all. Go right ahead. Okay, here we go. Let's search that. Let's see what we get. Okay, there's the 190 30th anniversary, the 2003's 14,000. So, can you do a screen share so I can see what you're doing? Yeah, just wait a minute. Yeah, let me try to screen share this. Hold on a minute. Let's see. All right, I'm going to screen share. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. I'm not perfect. Let me see. That's it to share. Okay, you got to go up. To, well, let's see. Present to everybody. Hold on, man. You have to go up to the advanced because you're you're. It's bringing up other uh, other things there. That's okay. <laughs> they're all they're all sold things. Let me get on that page though. Yeah, but you you didn't really put in the right keywords. That's why it's coming up with all the other stuff. You got to go back up to the advanced tab. Okay, I'm gonna go to advanced tab. Yeah. All right, and then it's clicks. Okay, so if you just uh, you could type in as a as a reference, you can just type in Class B camper van, and it'll bring up a lot more. If you type in Class B camper van, it'll bring up a lot more uh, listings and stuff. And then you click search, and it'll bring up a lot more listings that are sold. You'll see all of them coming up, and then you'll see a more variety. Okay. I don't know on the left side if you can filter by road trek. I don't know. I just know it brings up all of them. Yeah, let's see. I'm sure you can filter it by road trek. Let's see. I'm not sure. You have to go to the left. No, you can't. You can't filter by. You, can't filter. Yeah, you just have to go in there and look. You really can't. So you'll okay. just it's just looking in a matter of finding one, and, and okay. uh, they're there. It's just a matter of finding one and stuff. There's all the. Road track 190, $2,003 is $14,000. Let's look at this one for a minute. You want to look at this? 2000, yeah, 2000. if this item has been relisted, that means it hasn't been sold. They relisted it. Uh, if it's, it'll say on there when you click on it. Yeah, how about 2003? You want to look at this for a minute? That's, well, that's fine, but it's not the same. Is it a 210? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just looking for the yeah, particular the 190. One. Okay, you're looking for the 210s. I'm looking for the older 210. Yeah, you got to keep on going down to see until you find one. Yeah. Road I think there's track. also a filter up there where you can click on. Um, they got to have more than that. How about it? Have... Yeah, they only have one 1969 in there. So. Yeah, there's not a lot in this sold. There's only seven results for Class B camper vans. It seems too small. No, there's there's a lot more, but I, I think you're maybe you got to put in Class um, Class B RV. I try that Class B RV. I don't know why it's only coming up with limited results. I found them. Um, okay, here's Class B RV. How many does that bring up? Seventy-eight listings here. So. Okay. That's a lot more. Let's see if there's any uh, Road Treks, Proban, Tiger, Airstream, 
92 B190. Coach House. There's a 96 Coach House that went for 8,500. I used to see a lot of. Maybe you got to go on Google, but I used to see them. I used to see them all here. They were all here with uh, the okay. different ones that were sold. If you go, if you can't find it on there, the only other thing is, let me see. Is that a, not the Coachman? If you could just keep on scrolling down, let me see if it's. Uh, There's that nice Rialta. Yeah, most of my Rialtas. That's a pleasure way. Way. 95 Road Tech 190. Is that a Chevy, though? Oh, it's a Dodge. Yeah. Is it a Dodge? Yeah. No, it, it's a Dodge. Okay, I'm most of them are Dodges. I used to see a bunch of them on there. there, 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 there. Okay, that's a Chevy. Is that what is that one right there? Oh, no, that's a Falcon there. Okay, so yeah. you just keep on going down. See if there's anything. The Rialto, see the Rialto. You can see how much they're going for. I yeah, don't know what, they do uh, pretty good, man. Nine, ten, nine, twelve. It wasn't. Okay, there's a seven right there. Oh, is that a Horizon again? Oh, that's, a, that's the same one. Yeah. Uh, that's not. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's, I, I like did a search today and I didn't really see a lot. Uh, there's the eighty-nine Falcon. Well maintained. That went for. Okay, there's an Explorer, which is the equivalent right there. But that's uh, let's see if there's any more. There's a 2003, went for 14, 190. But you don't see a lot of 210s, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying because they're limited production. Stuff. Yeah. What's, which, one, which one is that one, the last one? That's a 91 Dodge Road Trek. Oh, well, I don't know what. The only thing I can, you can look up is if you go on Google and type in. Uh, uh, eBay and then type it in by year 90, 96 Road Trek 210. I don't know why they're not coming up. Yeah, they used to be all on there and stuff. But if you just go to Google and just type it in eBay, mode, eBay, like, uh, and just type in 96 Road Trek 210 popular eBay, then they'll come up on the Google search. Then that's the only thing. I don't know why they're not coming up there. Just type in 1996 Road Trek 210 popular eBay and then you can go 95, 96. Two ten popular, right? Two ten. Two ten yeah. And then eBay. And then sometimes it comes up. You can find it on a link on Google of what it was sold. We gotta type in eBay though. There's you your review. Yeah. Oh, eBay. Okay. You gotta type in eBay on the uh, at the end of it. Class B's road track, nineteen ninety six one ninety. You want me to click on this one here? Well, it's it's. Um. Yeah, I I don't know. It's uh, it's not coming up the right way. I guess it's not taking the two ten. There's well, it's all one ninety, well, man. It's just loaded with. Well, because there's not many, so I mean, yeah. it's Okay. So okay, your point is made. There aren't a lot out there. Okay, so it's a very rare rig. Did you try to go to RV Trader and see if you can find one? Can you go to RV Trader here and just see? Because that's that's the that's the that's the ultimate one where you could see uh, RV Trader and stuff and click on you just click Road Trek and collect rigs from like say uh, five thousand to twenty thousand to see if there's any. Uh, or you can type in Road Trek two ten popular as the keyword, and then you can search by price. Let's look at all. Let's let's uh, okay. Let's find. Let's see what we can find. Because this searches the whole nation. Two thousand nine, two thousand eighteen. There's only well, there's there's twenty one of twenty five of fifty three. Let's see. There's a two thousand sixteen, two thousand ten, nineteen. Oh, is that a black one? I think is that one of them? That black one right there. Go up to that black one. There's a Chevy right there that I saw that you just like passed. 
Uh, these, these are all 2010. Yeah, I just bought one that was uh, older and stuff. It was a black one there. That you that you passed. There it is right there. That one right there. That's a 210, I think. Is that a 210? The black one, or is that on? Is that for sale? Which one? This one? Mm -hmm. The black one, the black Chevy. I just, I'm looking at it right now. Oh, is that not? That's a uh, conversion van. Oh, okay. I don't know if there's any other ones. The 2008. Yeah, they're just. You don't even though. That's, um... Everything's like uh, 2015, 14. Oh, it's going in order. 2012. Okay, it's going to the older ones as we go down 2011. Let's go to the next page. You can filter by price on there. That's interesting. I just see them all. I just go by. There's a 2011, 2010, 2008, 2008. We're starting to get to the, there's a 2008, 57, 9. These are all 210s. 2007, 6, 2006, 2006, 5. Let's go to the last page here. Let's see. 2004. There's a 95. There, there it is right there. There's one right there. That's it right there. $15,000. Okay. There you go. That's one of them. I've seen many of them for fifteen to 20000 but that's one of them right there. That's the exact same one. If you could, like, show people the pictures on the inside so they can see it, that's the one right there. Everybody see that okay? You can yeah. zoom, in, zoom in the page if you want. There you go. There you go. If you could toggle, let's just show the yeah, people. Yeah, I will. I'll show people. God damn, that thing is ugly. <laughs> Would you say it's that, thing, that thing is beautiful, man? That's I one of the best. Purple as hell. That thing is a beast, man. I love this van. I'm telling you, this is the van that Mr. X has right here. If you could just click the repeaters and show the people and stuff. Look at the stance on that thing. Look at that. Built-in AC up I there. Like, I like the aerodynamics. I always told you I like the aerodynamics. This thing is a beast, and it's fifteen thousand, right? With them. Um, yeah, look at this. This is one of them, and I've seen many of them for fifteen. And you see how rare they are. They only made only a handful and stuff. There's the uh, AC in the back, which I love. The AC. Four headlights with the signal light. How classic that looks. Look yeah. at the built-in AC. Look at the light indicator up top. Look at the jealousy windows. That right there is a beast right there. Yeah, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. I do like that. Look at how long that is, Rosie. Look at the that's length 20, of that. Is that 21 that's feet? Long. It's at least 22 feet long. It's wow. almost two, two and a half feet longer than, than a... Look at that. It's not a wide body, though, is it? No, it's all it's all steel. The wide body. I thought you said the wide body was better. Here's some of the particulars here. 16 by 6, 38 tires, 86. This is the 95. This is the same year as the one Mr. X has. Yep, 95. 8,600 right. pounds weight on that. Right. London Park Motorhomes, April 95. 52,000 miles. 72441, right? Yeah, okay. but the legitimacy of that, I mean, those could be rolled. This has got the beige sheets, which is really rare. It comes in gray, beige, blue, mod, green. There's a variety of colors. This is a beige one, which is pretty rare. It's got the... It's a nice rig. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at the... And there you go. That's your... The second row chairs there, which are removable. You can put cabinets or leave them there. I would leave the one by the driver's because it's got the nice window there, and that's like your little dinette. You could pull swivel your other seat, and you have a two-person dinette. You could have a cabinet coming in if you don't want that one there. But it's versatile and stuff. And you see you got the fiberglass floor. You see that? You yeah. got the island tower up top and the padded vinyl headliner. Yep. The beautiful kitchen. It's, it's a work of art. Built-in AC. I mean, it's, it's a glorious rig. I still think it's overrated. <laughs> This is what you call a rig, Narcy. This is what I call overrated to the extreme. Look at, look at that! Look at that! Look at that storage up top. Oh, uh, this is your your shower. bathroom. This is your uh, shower. You know, your. Well, this is your shower area that opens up. Now, one uh, 
if you just finish looking at the pictures, I want to tell you one thing that I modify on it. Um, this is the twin benches in the back that seat at least three people on each side. You have the cabinets. Those both come into a bed, I think. Yep, there you go. That's the back of it. Very nice. Very nice. It's a beautiful rig, I'm telling you. That's just... Here's your monitor panels. Well, that's a nice rig. Now, one thing I want to tell you what I would change on this rig. There's only one thing that I would modify. When you open the door to the bathroom, it will swing into the aisle, but then it's you're actually limiting your if you, if you just go could go back to the shower. Right, okay, right there. Um, when you open the door, it doesn't swing out all the way. It still is in is in the aisle. So I would actually make a hinge system, and I don't know how I would do it. Maybe you know better because you're handy. Or and you would be able to hinge the door like a piano all the way, yeah. so it would completely be out of the aisle. Yeah. And that way you could actually extend your shower your shower curtain to a larger area in the aisle so that you could have actually more elbow room. Yeah. That's the only modification. Now, how would you do that, Rosie? You just double hinge that, I guess. You would have that all on one. Uh, you, you, yeah, I mean, it's very, it's not, it's not difficult to do. I'm just looking at yeah. this. Yeah, that's the only thing that I would modify so I could get the shower door out of my way. So it wouldn't get wet, and plus I'd have more elbow room, and it would just hinge completely out of the way, flat into the wall. A nice rig. But that's it right there, and it's fifteen thousand dollars. And I've seen them. There's many, many others. But I've seen fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand asking price. I've seen them sold on eBay for fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand. So this is the top of the line that of that year for Rotary because the you know. Is that an external generator? Um. I'm, I I don't know what that is on the back. Uh, the generator. Can you go on the other side, real quick? Um, on the other side of the rig. No, not not that side. The other side. Uh, if you could go to the other. Okay, the generator on this rig. You see that compartment door on the rear quarter panel? Right here. All the way in the back. That's where the generator is housed on these units. And it's actually you open up that panel, and it's right there. So. I'm not sure if it's actually inside of the rig under the bed or if it's actually mounted to the um, to the actual uh, frame. I'm not sure. It's probably that damn bed. I not see that, but it looks like it could be under the bed. Probably that damn micro light 2.8 too. So. Yeah, that's what it is. Yep, that's what it is. It's right that's there. That's looking rig. There's no doubt. And, and the refrigerator vent is right there. If you see that window, that's where the, they hide the refrigerator vent in that window on that side. Yeah. So go to the other side. Yeah. yeah. But it's very stealth looking. If you were to take the stripes off of this thing, you see the refrigerator vent is in the middle right there and on the bottom. So if you were to take the stripes off of this thing, you wouldn't even know it's a camper vent. Well, hell, it's a nice, I'd keep the stripes, make it look nice, you know. I mean, I it's a nice looking rig. It's but just that's the bottom line. Normal. This is, in my opinion, and I'm the foremost authority on Class B camper vans. This is the best uh, van non wide body ever made. This is the top of the line here. I agree. This is the best in the world. This ain't no panel van. This ain't no fiberglass truck with a little. Yeah, it's the barn. Here we go. Here we go. Like the Here we go. I'm gonna see with the side chat. Uh... Look at those beautiful lines on that rig. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, it's eat your heart out, you peasants. That's the best in the world, right there. Dad, the nice, no I want to see what the uh, side chat says. Uh, I'm curious. What do you guys think of that? Uh, I think it's sleek looking. Uh, the Kevin says the 170 or 190 is more practical. See, the 190 is one I'll probably end up getting. Fits in a regular parking spot. Um, That thing is junk. Why do you say that, uh, Traveling? Um, seeing what these people say about the uh, getting a nice paint job on that, like getting it painting it fire engine red or getting don't the whole paint job on it. Yeah, thank you, Mika. Don't you think I think that thing would buff out just fine? That uh, get a little compound on that. That's uh, you got a little bit of haze from sun, you know, get off the top, buff out the top. 
I know, Nicole, I care about this stuff. So apologies to anybody who doesn't. Uh, I mean, we got to still say the backbone of this community is still our being in this uh, community. So, you know what? Mr. X bought the rig because of me. Yeah. That's the bottom line. He bought it because of me. He took my opinion on it. He bought the sight unseen because of me. Uh, there's a lot of people who bought rigs because of me, my cousin, many other people that I probably don't even know that have been watching me over the years say that I inspired them to get these rigs, but I've lived the life. I've done the research. I've paid my dues. I've had the blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. How you doing? Mr. X on the side chat there. How you doing? Yeah. And I made a video for Mr. X today and Chris Diamond travels and they can go back and watch it. And it was a classic. And I know one thing. The will of God, I sure, he's watching me up there in heaven. And my mind energy, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he's steering God, I sure, made this happen. I've been talking about this rig for years. For years, I've been talking about it. And guess who's got ownership of it now? Not only any rig, this particular rig I've known about for five years. Five years. What's the chance of that, that happening that somebody buys a rig that I've been talking about for five years that I made videos about that I immortalized on my channel and stuff? It's well, a miracle. I, it's a miracle. And it's the will of God himself that Mr. X bought this rig, was able to buy it, first of all. And now I have possession of it. It's a miracle. It's the power of mind energy, of synchronicity, of the Asturian God Ashur working through me. That's well, why it happened. I'm just saying now, traveling, if I had 15, I would, if I, I do have 15, but if I was local for that 210, I'd go look at, I'd go look it up and probably plunk my money down and get that thing. So that's, that's what I think about the road track 210. I mean, that's a, that's the rarest, it is the, it is the rare of the rare. It is, the, it is a classic, vintage, retro, ultra-luxury, top-of-the-line flagship. The best that you could ever have in that year. It's a nostalgic rig with prestige. If you own that thing, you have prestige. Yeah, well, I think you it's all the You can be part and parcel. You can be part next to rigs that are $150,000, $200,000. You could be a solo trucker. You could be part of Road Trek, which Road Trek is, they have an occult following. Well, I There's do. I do a part of I've already told. We talked for the last two years. Yeah, I'd love to have the Road Trek, and I think I have to settle for the 190 on that. <clears throat> I had a not, I didn't, uh, Brandon, I had an 88 that was good. The coachman had fixed it up really nice. It was still decent. Um, I wouldn't be afraid of a 96. I'm just saying if the price is right on that. So you probably walk in there with 13 cash and walk out of it. <clears throat> Burbs, this is an RB chat. Okay, please. Okay. But I'm just here. I'm just here to give my opinion and educate people. They can agree with me, disagree with me. A lot of people agree. A lot of people never they never lived in a van. They never been in a camper van. They never did their research. But it's like the old saying, you know, yeah. um, you 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 know. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to talk to Mister X. I got a phone call into him, but uh, would you ever buy a van and do a conversion build? Well, Nicole, I think. You know, I, I really want something to just go. Like right now, I'm happy with this panel van, which is fine for me for just initially getting started. But I always have my eyes out. But I would give 2500 for the Lisa Marie. I would do that and drive it out here. I wouldn't work on it right away, but I would I'd have to park it the here. Point, the point that I'm trying to make is, is that I know if you bought the Lisa Marie for $2,500, you could triple your money with a seventy-five hundred to even ten thousand dollars by just doing whatever you have to do to it in California. But 
what I'm saying is when you have a road trek 210 and you got a rig that you know is worth twenty to twenty five thousand dollars and you know it is the top of the line creme de la creme flagship the prestige all right guys yeah he's gonna have a good night yeah nar says he's gonna roll out i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna grab a near beer marshall i'll be right back because i am interested very much in this so this is right up my uh all right, Narcy, we'll see you tomorrow, okay? Get a good brand in the morning. Okay? Get around All right, man. All right, have a good one. Sir, camper van, man. Camper van. Camper van. All right. All right, Rosie, this is a moment here. I know. This is a moment that will live in history. This is one of the biggest things that ever happened on YouTube. This has happened the second time now where somebody's buying a van. And, you know, Mr. X bought this van because he knew it was a good deal. He knew it was a good van. He took my recommendation on it. And... And look at the, how the power of God works. It could have been another 210, but it was the same 210 I've been talking about that I knew about for five years. What is the chance that he bought it while he was in Chicago, I sight unseen? Because somebody that knew Mr. X knew about this van and gave him the lead. And just like that, if this was sitting at a dealership right now, you'd be looking at 19995 or 249 all day long. Well, it's sitting at RV Trade. There's one at RV Trader. It's a year older, but for I say fifteen, you know, uh, but still a good Marshall. There's it's a great rig, you know. There's no doubt for the price. It's a good rig. I mean, it's gonna. It only has what I don't know how many miles that has on it. But the, I always see these things listed with 190 thousand miles. These things go forever. These uh, these road tracks. You always see them listed. They have high mileage, and uh, well, you know we hate to move it on. It was our family friend, and all this stuff. But you rarely see the two tens listed out here. Semper Fi, Ujiro, you rarely see the two ten. You see the one nineties all the day, all day long. The one nineties. Well, they didn't make. If you think about it for a second, think about this. In nineteen ninety six and down, most of the road tricks that were produced were on the Dodge Ram platform. They didn't go to Chevy until 2003 when Dodge stopped making the Dodge van. Yeah. In the 90s, in that day and age, to have a, and they had Chevy road tricks, they're very rare. And the 210 is the rarest of the rare. They had a 190. They even had a 200 Chevy, believe it or not, that I seen one time. That's really rare. That's even rarer than a 200 or 210. But to have okay, this... Okay. You know, yeah. Let's 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 talk reality now, Marshall. So, what's going to happen? Well, I don't know. I just put it out there okay. today of, of the Not conclusion. Today. I have I have closure in my mind now that I know that Mister X has it. Okay. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do with it, but he. I'm happy. I'm happy that he bought it. I'm happy that he got it for a good deal. Whatever he got it for, which. Nobody has the right to know that's his business. Right. But I'm sure he got it for a good deal because he bought it from the daughter of the uh, owner and it was an estate sale. And uh, he literally got a rig. I mean, he saved thousands of dollars. There's no question about it. He's got a rig that's ultra rare. You see how hard they are to find. Yeah. Uh, and he's got, I mean, any way you look at it, I'm happy that he bought it. Whatever he does with it, that's up to him. But uh, I'm glad that he bought it, and I'm glad he got a good deal on it. At least that's good news. And uh, whatever he decides to do with it, that's up to him. But this is just – I believe that it's supernatural. I believe that uh, – what is the chance that he was going to buy a rig that we both knew about 
five years ago that could be sold any time. And then he buys it sight unseen from Chicago because he got a lead from it from one of his buddies. It's supernatural. Well, I it's mean, with, all, with, all, with all due respect, I mean, he saw you talk about it. He saw you do videos about it in 2017. So he kind of knew when it was for sale that he should jump immediately on that and buy it because he f probably figured no matter what, I can turn a good profit on this thing. So I say, mm -hmm. Mr. X, you can turn your good profit, but the question is, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to sell it? Do you want to keep it yourself? Knowing you, and I've met you in person, we've, we've talked and uh, hung out, worked on the Lisa Marie and stuff. So, you know, every person... I Every, I man, really every man has his price. You know what I mean? I, there I, I, I really, I really wanted the rig because it's. I've done my research on it, and I like the rig. But I also wanted to show people why I like it. I wanted to show people on YouTube why I think it's the best, why I like it, and I wanted to show to showcase the Road Trek 210 because Road Trek is. Everybody knows what a Road Trek is. But not many people have seen a 210 Chevrolet because they're so rare. They're so rare. They're so limited production that most people haven't seen one. They don't know how nice it is. They've never been inside of one. Yeah. They're only, they're, they've only made a handful. And I wanted to have the opportunity to showcase it to the world. This rare, I mean, it's it's a piece of history. It's nostalgia. It's uh, I wanted to have that opportunity to showcase that to the people and stuff. And put it out there like just incredible. Put out uh, the Explorer 230. This is this is one of those rigs that's that's um, uh, um, this is on a whole class of its own. This is on a whole different spectrum, a whole different thing. This is you know, this is the this is the uh, the top of the lines, and this is well, rare. I guess that for the record, I think your cousin really bounced you a bad ball with uh, that leisure travel or whatever the hell it was at Pleasure Way. So yeah, he, he he did. Okay, Nicole. Yeah, but um, I just think that you know that, like I said, most people know Road Trek, and when they see Road Trek, they they know the Road Trek 190 Dodge. Yeah, but they don't know there was a Road Trek 190 Chevrolet or a Road Trek 200 Chevrolet. They don't know that there's a, you know, a road trek 170. They don't know a lot about these other more rare road treks. And uh, this is just something where, you know, it's just showcasing something you believe in, just like you showcase your radios. No, I, I, showcase Janice, look, I love the 210. As Janet said, the 210 is too big for most parking space, but most parking space. It's it's 21 feet, I think. Um, it's about... Uh, uh, it's easily two feet longer than my van. So if mine is 19, I would say it's at least it's 21 plus, probably 21 and a half, somewhere around that. It's two feet longer than a than a. Mine's is 19 and a half. I think it's about 21 and a half. East Coast lady, look, uh, kit and cat. I'm not shilling for anybody. I am curious when a deal is done in this community. Of course, I'm naturally curious about. It. I'm not shilling for anybody. If a deal comes down, I'm happy to be a part of it. Do I have money to go into it? No, but I'm saying if it's a question of getting a hold of the of the coachman, of course. Count. In my opinion, uh, if you look at my cousin's decision to buy the leisure travel, he bought it for eighty five hundred. He turned around and sold it for, um, I think it was seventeen or eighteen thousand. He almost more than doubled his profit on the rig. And this is the same thing with this rig. Uh, Mr. X has the opportunity to triple, quadruple his profit or more on this rig, and that's just the way it is. Yeah. It, 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 the, you know, the numbers speak for themselves, and you saw the asking price, $15,000. i have seen them for $20,000, twenty five, and and um, and that's it. I mean, so um, – but I just – I had the opportunity to see this thing in person, and I know how nice it is. You know, and, and um, it, it's um, it's a great rig, and whoever gets it is a lucky person and stuff. At whatever uh, price is out there, and whatever happens, and but this is just to prove to you that people are listening to what I have to say. They're buying them, they're selling them, 
but there nobody's really showcasing them on YouTube. They just want to make the quick buck, and that's yeah, how I, most. I know work. Joey Joey D. I've had everything from a 1951 Chrysler Imperial right up on the line. Older things don't scare me. I'm saying I do the work myself, but what I'm saying is, I'm not shilling for anybody. I'm only curious to see whatever, if anything, ever comes out with it. That's all. My only interest is just, you know, I would like to see a 210 into the community. I think it would be an amazing thing to see this thing on the on the road and just the uh, sleekness of it. I can't speak for the condition of it, but I'm just saying when you see that, well, look, I can get a black tank here, Kit and Cat. That's not a huge issue here to to mount up a black tank. I mean, that's not a deal killer. I mean, for twenty five hundred dollars, you're getting a good deal on that. Well, the, the upside to it, if you look at it, the stealth factor to it, the stealth factor to it, and the clean look to it, and the low profile top where it would allow you to go into most drive throughs I can't do that with Lisa Marie. My clearance is over ten and a half. I right. could pull the drive-throughs with this thing that I couldn't do on Lisa Marie. I could pull under a lot of buildings, a lot of garages. The stealth factor to it of the average person looking at my van, knowing it's a motorhome, looking at this thing, you really the average Joe Blow doesn't know it's a motorhome. Uh, the integrated AC. I mean, there's the stealth factor to the rig. Uh, the the um, the way Road Trick makes all the compartments on the outside very, they're they're subtle. They're not obvious. Um, there are so many up ups to it that I've looked at this rig, and said to myself, all these factors, how it's built on the inside, how it's made on the outside, that it, in my opinion, is the best Class B camper van ever made, ever in the world. It's better than a wide body because of the stealth factor. Um, it's just the ultimate. There is no other. There is no other one better than this rig. This is. Let me, ask you this. Let me ask you this, Marshall. Has stealth factor been that important to you? Well, uh, honestly, yeah. Well, it, it's. Uh, I've ran into. Uh, uh, I've ran into some. Uh, yeah, there's been some problems where the looks that I get in this rig, the attention, it brings more attention that I want. Because of the high top, and most people, uh, uh, if they see the Road Trek 210, they can't figure it out. It looks basically like almost like a just a passenger van or cargo van from a distance. But when you look at the Coachman, you're talking about a whole different category. And I get looks from people; they look at the top, and I don't like that kind of attention and stuff because it brings attention from oh, people. I agree. Oh, I agree. I really don't really want another high top. I love the two tens lines. I like the way the ACs, you're not going to have a root, a rip off unit on top of your, uh, uh, RV. You know, it's a very sleek design. I mean, it's a very good looking rig. It's a very sleek design. And I just think that, uh, road truck. Everybody, everybody take gets their ideas from road truck. The uh, the integrated AC. That's road truck's idea. The aisle shower. That's road truck's idea. Where they put the kitchen. The three windows up top. That's a trademark. But a lot of things that they do. The people that started road truck. They wanted to make a motorhome into a, a a small van, and they engineered it and designed it. And it, it took a a team of people to to do that. And everybody tries to rip rip off road yeah. truck and. And that's what I try to explain to people, just how it's made on the outside, on the inside. You've got the Chevrolet engine 350 that's that you can put the 454 in there if you want. you got a better transmission in GM. Everybody knows that. The chassis. So there was a reason that they picked the Chevrolet G30 chassis for this 210. And uh, and, every, and every other way that it was made. I mean, it's just it's, it's perfection. Chassis perfection and the only thing you could improve is what? Put a 4x4 four four in there, put a diesel engine. Then you got the ultimate. But I would never take a rig like that 4x4. Four four, so. No, you wouldn't, take, you wouldn't take that. <laughs> on a, on I would want to take a disposable piece of junk, but I'd never take a, a rig like that off the road. I wouldn't take it in, into the desert or nothing like that. And, but, it's not made for uh, – it's not 
made for Jacoba Johnson. The chassis was too light for the weight. I don't never really heard that issue with the with the uh, two tens, uh, Cobra John. I I haven't really heard that that they're overweight for the chassis on them. They come in at eighty five hundred pounds, I think, something like that. Uh, yeah, I think, I think if you were to get an efficient AC like Just Incredible did and get the 1,000 Yamaha, you would barely hear nothing running in that rig. It would be so it would be so stealth that uh, you're st just the quality of that stealth factor, knowing that I, and I've seen it where you can get a 1,000-watt uh, um, generator and run uh, an efficient uh, rooftop AC with it. Just the uh, stealth factor to that, plus the low-profile top and how – yeah, see, traveling is staying in the Chinook with the 7.3 fits. They're rare. You don't see a lot of Chinooks out here. So you only see 190 uh, Coachmans, too. You know, I mean, the 190 um, road tracks, you don't see the 210s. They're, uh, they're very rare. Well, yeah. Dale Rogers, I enjoy talking about – honestly, I could talk about this stuff for days. I enjoy – it is Class B talk here tonight. I'm just curious as if a deal can be done. That's all. That's that's. Uh, it's a great. It's a great rig. If the price is right, it's a good. Uh, it's a good rig. You know. Yeah, I would if I was part. Uh, if I was part in. Uh, <laughs> if I was part in say downtown New York like I was, wouldn't you rather be in the two ten than the than the coachman? Oh, hell yeah, of course. Your lower profile. The deal of potentially buying, maybe Mr. X decides to sell. I don't know. You know, I'm not, I'm just saying if. I'm not one people saying, oh, you twisted Mr. X's arm to say, look, Mr. X does what the hell he wants to do. Okay, but I'm saying if he did sell it, that would be a nice rig for uh, being able to be a little more lower profile. You say 21 foot is not stealth. I still think 21 feet is stealth. Okay. I didn't think uh, 19 was that big and it's two more feet. <clears throat> what do you mean? How does that benefit Marshall? He gets a, he gets a uh, rig that uh, is a 210. I figured I figured I would give my rig to you at a discount price and you can fix it up and sell it and get top dollar for it in California and make your profit and then I can get into this rig and then showcase what I've been waiting to showcase for four or five years. And if it would I, benefit everybody. If I get that, if I get that Lisa Murray. I'm going to make that thing look like it's showroom new coming out of it. By the time I'm done with that damn thing, that thing is going to be the Colonel Parker, okay? <laughs> <laughs> when I'm done with that, now I'd be the least. How will you afford all this? I think he's actually got the financing already lined up, Nicole, and not me, okay? I think he already um, has. Rosie's not, Rosie's, not, Rosie's not financing me I'm for nothing. Not Yes. I'm I'm looking to sell to Lisa Marie. Yeah. I'll sell to Rosie at a discount rate. If Mr. X can give me a deal on this and we can work something out, I can get the little kibbles and bits together and, and to make it happen. And it would benefit Rosie, like I said, because uh it would uh she could take her time on working on the Lisa Marie and just yeah. fix whatever it needs and then she can sell it and make her profit and move on. And uh, I don't, I don't care about uh, Rosie making a profit because I look at Rosie just like my mom. I look at Mr. S. Well, like I only, look, Mark. I only look at it from a build, a build point of view. Like, what could, what could this be? You know, how, how well could this be totally restored? You know what I mean? Not restored, but to maybe a different layout with a build interior, build out, and all those things. You know, with the shower you talked about. And all that, making that dream come true, that you would still be able to see that on the road and still be able to keep an eye and feel like you're still invested in that rig, you know, to see that thing on yeah. the uh, 
on the road. That's what I'm saying. To keep that in the community would be a wonderful thing. You know, that rig. A lot of people say, oh, burn it or whatever. But hell, it's uh, for me, it's more fun from a technical and I think that a lot of people would I think a lot of people just because I wonder if it changed hands into your hands if it would still hate on the Lisa Marie or not because if you own it would there would they still hate the Lisa Marie? That would be interesting to see. Because yeah, they hate the Lisa Marie because of me, not because they hate the Lisa Marie, it's because they hate me. But if you actually own the Lisa Marie, would they actually continue hating on the Lisa Marie? That would be that would be interesting. Yeah, that's what I'd say. It'd be interesting. And I would uh, I would keep that thing the same, uh, you know. I mean, I wouldn't change the name of it. I would have it exactly the same way. But I'm just saying it'd be interesting. I mean, I would definitely buy that thing, you know. I mean, that's a du that's the done part of the deal. That's the done part of the deal. It'd be quite an adventure getting out here to uh, <laughs> California. That. <laughs> That's Berg, stop calling me, please. That would be very interesting to see uh, to see that. Yes, Berg's is calling. I'm just please don't call me right now. I'm, I'm trying to think. Could you imagine, could you imagine if, if you bought the Lisa Marie and I pull up in the Road Trek 210 and I got the Lisa Marie and the 210 on the Rancho? Could you just imagine that scene? That would be yeah, that would be crazy. But don't you think it would be fun to do a total restore everybody in the community on that uh, Lisa Murray? I, I think, think I think I think that yeah, I think that you'd be the person to do it. You could do whatever you want, and then you could. Uh, so I've already I've already said that I would definitely uh, I would definitely buy that rig. That's for sure. So um, let me see what's going on here. Hold on one second, Marshall. Yeah, I'm asking you, Bergs. Please don't. Uh, please don't right now. I would. I would. Um, I look at it like, yeah, keeping the rig in the family. I would. I would uh, miss seeing the Lisa Marie go, but if you kept it, um, that would make me feel good. Because it would be really, really sad. I would be, it would be heartbreaking to me for me to see it go. Yeah. But I would be so happy with the Road Trek 210. I would still love the Lisa Marie. I would never forget it. And, you know, yeah. if you kept it in the family, in the Wing Bull family, it would be awesome. Yeah. And then when it's, take care, of Cobra John. Thank you for the wonderful support of the uh, mods today. Much love to you. Marshall, I got to tell you, yeah, it's going to be interesting. My thoughts, it's going to be interesting to see if that, uh, to I'm see. Saying, it would be, if this were to happen, like I said, I just could imagine you working on Elisa Marie and you have it and it's part of your whole show. And it's like, I gave this rig life. Now, Rosie, you're giving it life. And now all of a sudden I'm coming in with the 210 and it would just be, crazy it would just I don't, I don't know how to explain it it would just be something else so. yeah Sophia says can I ask a question of Elvis and could you ask him I'm curious how the name Lisa Marie connects to Elvis Presley's daughter Lisa Marie as the Presley scribe I want to get it right can you explain how you decided to uh, well I, I was I was going to name the Van Graceland but then I asked all my fans on YouTube they're like what do you want me to name it and they all said Lisa Marie and I just went with it. It wasn't Narcy's idea. It was the the fans. And uh, they all said Lisa Marie, and I went with it, and that was it. I was going to name it Graceland. Yeah. That was my original. Um, there, there it is. That's what the name uh, – there's what the name uh, came from. But, um. I don't know, Joe King. See, because the, 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 uh, the upside on the Lisa Marie is the mileage is still low. You know, and the drivetrain to me trumps all on those rigs. I mean, that's that's really the thing. <clears throat> to me, that's the main thing. If the drivetrain is good, then everything else is a doable on that. Is Norbecker in here? I don't see him in here, but that's that's the thing. So, so if if you actually bought the Lisa Marie, would you keep it or would you eventually sell it or would you actually keep it? 
I'd keep it. I would keep it. I would I would just work on it little by little. It's just a, a hobby thing. Yeah. Yeah, how you doing, Norbecker? What's going on? I would uh by the time I was done restoring that thing, Marshall would uh, it would make you weep to see that thing <laughs> coming down <laughs> coming down <laughs> coming down the road on there i mean it's age can be as bad but for me i have mechanical inclination so i'm not uh no it's uh, i don't care cindy it this uh, the the monetary thing is not that big of a deal so i would never sell that rig i would never sell that rig i so. think people would just they would talk about it every day they'd be wondering what you're doing with it You'd be wondering what's the next thing you're going to do with it. And I'd be watching too. I'd be wondering well, what is she going to do with it now, yeah. or what is her next project, or what are you going to? I would just it would keep me coming back. I mean, it would. Uh, it's just an interesting thing. Sweet Melissa's how is Elvis going to get the road track? See, I don't. The beautiful thing for me, Melissa, is I don't really have to worry about how that part is done. Um. I'm not involved in that end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can do head gaskets and intakes. I can, Junker. I've done uh, done them before. But let's face it, it's 73,000 miles. I don't see uh, uh, new head gaskets and uh, intake manifold gaskets in its future. So, well, private jobs, it doesn't cost anything to have a flight of fantasy and, and – be curious if as if something could happen <clears throat> you know i hear you jk yeah. hey, jk no cal if you want to stop down for uh pizza tomorrow night you're welcome to come down brother uh what would be the cost yeah the cost would be worth it to me yeah because you don't know how much fun I would have restoring that and just taking it one component at a time, the carpentry, the custom building. I would actually try to do the build plan that Marshall wanted to see in that rig, which would be the front shower, the rebuilt back bed, and a composting toilet and all that. So it would be uh it'd be like wow he's like be like wow you made it happen you know that's exactly what i envisioned on that uh on that rig did you ever get that stove thing straightened out marshall oh i don't uh i think there's something going on because i put it it finally lit up but it's a very low propane so Okay, I'll maybe, it's regulator, maybe it's something else in there that regulates that propane, but it's very weak. Some pr probably has got to be some kind of part. I'm not sure. So, well, I think Ari uh, Ott says he's trying to work his scheme by convincing Rosie to buy the Lisa Marie. I've already offered to buy the Lisa Marie. That's a done deal. That part of the deal is done. Okay, I don't mind that. In, in your opinion, Rosie, with and I just want to get your opinion, right? A, uh, we don't know how much Mr. X bought it for, and it's really none of our business. It's not of anybody's business, but if it's a road trek 95, you know, 210 with say 120,000 miles, good shape. I think the only issue on it is the refrigerator is not working, a couple of power windows are not working. He told me they bought a new rooftop AC and new tires, but let's just say, you know, a fridge is about a thousand dollars right there. What do you think the rig is worth? Now what, that you've seen what, the, what's the mileage again? I think it's about 120. Uh 13, 13 to 15. Okay. But you tell me it's in great. See, I'm a, you told me the body is like just tremendous on it. You oh, know? It's Good. in showroom condition. Yeah. Yeah, the inside and out, both inside and out. Yeah, I don't, I'm definitely not less than 12, Brandon. No way. I mean, I would say 13 to 15 on that. What type is the Lisa Marie's? It's a Coachman camper van. It's a 1989 Coachman. Hi, Luna. Uh, 
Yeah, twelve five to thirteen five. Thank you, uh, Mr. Escobar. Yes, I mean, that's what that's what it would be selling for. You're saying at a dealer. Yeah, that would be it. I'm not doing anything flaming dragon. I'm just saying if it, if it's a business deal, I'm all for buying it. That's it. It's not showroom conditioning. That's right, traveling. Um, yeah, I mean, it's you. Anybody that has an RV over. 15 years, 18 years old. I, 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 I just don't think these people that are watching, I don't think that they have the slightest idea of what people are asking for these vans and how much people are selling them for. They just think that these vans are as cheap as a, a conversion van or cargo van or passenger van. They don't have the slightest idea. No, they're not. They're a special class of uh, RV. They're they're in a world by themselves. They're yeah. Um, they're not comparable. They're not. They're not. They're not. Um, um, the Nata book or Blue book does have no has no bearing over them. The, um, the you can't go by the book with these things. It's what the market is uh, bearing for them, and that's what it is. So people might say, hey, the van is, it's a 95. You're talking how many years old now? Uh, 25 years old, right? But um, thank you, Nicole. Um, this comment from guys said he could sell the lease. Marie. Well, if, if it's getting a deal done quickly, private Dobbs, it's, you know, I'm just, there's nothing wrong with me saying and putting it out there that I would buy it, you know. Um, I'm not an immediate, I wouldn't immediate, it's not my intent if I buy it to immediately turn it around and put it on the road again. My thing is to treat it like a, like a hobby project to just take my time and just really have something to do in the off season to really make that a glorious rig. Okay. It's not to immediately go out the road and travel but to have like a showpiece project hobby. That's right. Gigi. That's exactly it. Nothing more than that. Not to, not to go out, but be able to have it go on the road if you wanted to and have people look at that and just say, wow, you know, look at it now. It, yeah. It was, you know, it, it could be done. So there's nothing wrong with that. A restoration project. Yeah. That's all it is. Junker a restoration project. Good night, Luna. Yeah, fixer upper. Now I think that'd be worth keeping in the community. I would never let it go outside of the community or yeah, it could last forever as a weekend, or that's right. And I would take that uh rear tire cover and I would do in, in script Lisa Marie on the back of that uh thing. That would look pretty wild. Yeah, I would love doing that, Jan. That's my only real interest, not to make anybody mad, but just to see what could become of that rig would really be fascinating. Um, to see if Marshall's build idea could come true, you know, on that uh, build ad. I think that'd be very interesting to do that. I thought about this for a long time, for years, how I would do it, and then it just... Uh, it was years, took me years of thinking about how I would do it. And I finally came to the conclusion of how it should be done. And uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. But to actually see it happen, that would be uh, uh, cool as hell. But uh, I think the people out there, I think their uh, opinion would change on Lisa Marie. If you owned it and whatever you did to it, I don't think that they would um, – I think some would continue to hate. It would be a handful, but I think most people would turn around and they would stop hating the Lisa Marie. And I think that's what would make me feel good well, in the I end. Look, Marshall, I don't think anybody currently hates the Lisa Marie. Okay, let's let's not get it twisted. It's not the Lisa <laughs> – it's not the Lisa Marie. I mean, the Lisa Marie's metal, plastic, fiber, and, and rubber. <laughs> Somebody's going to hate that. Marshall, you know what I'm saying? They, well, they, they hate such a strong word. Is there's very few haters of anything in this community? In my opinion, 
there's people that don't like what they see on the day. To, but would they ever come and blow up the van or do it? Hell no. They would never do anything like that. You know, the flex blue velour seats and all that. I mean, it's like, how could you do that? How could you do that? Um, there's a, there's no, I don't think the Ujiro, that's funny. The side chat's funny as hell. One, one thing that you should do to the Lisa Marie is what do you think about installing the uh, semi air horns? Compressor horns. Get the big, yeah, I'd get big train horns and mount on the front. So you're going down the street. <laughs> Scared the hell out of people. Okay, uh, Flaming Dragon, that's fine. I'm not here to piss anybody off. I'm just having fun tonight talking about the potential future of a new rig in the community new to Marshall and then a rig that's new to me, the Lisa Marie. I think that would be pretty cool. I, I, and I would never let it go outside of the community. That's for damn sure. Let's see, Tasha said you're demented. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, the Road Track 210 is a beauty. Now that I've seen the 95, the 96 is pretty cool looking. So. Yep. All right, I'm going to try to help Narsa tomorrow for his YouTube channel. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, yeah, he said if you could stop calling him Humpty Dumpty, that would be good. <laughs> you know? That's a cartoon character, I think. So, uh, he's, it's been a pleasure having him. Uh, it's been a pleasure having him out here. He's been a lot of fun uh, out here on the ranch show. Is Elvis buying a new rig? New and not in the sense of a new because the new road tracks and I've been informed the country companies bankrupt and laid off uh, all of its employees. But new ones are very expensive. Newer ones are 90, 80, 90,000, 100,000. So they're not cheap. Hey, Road Trek got bought out by Heimer or something. I don't think that they, they just got bought out by Heimer. I think they're going to. Okay, so I guess they closed their own factories or whatever. Yeah. So um, I don't know, Joe King. The ball is obviously in Mr. X's court. So he's the, he's the, he's the first gear that moves. That's all. JK, if you want to come down tomorrow evening, you're welcome to come down for pizza. Mm -hmm. Rosie, do you think uh, that Chris Diamond will end up buying this rig? No. You don't think so? I don't think so. I'm wondering if um, – I don't know if he's he's got the cash to splash on it. I don't know. So. Well, I think Chris Diamond said he was ready to pull the trigger, but he knew that I wanted it, and he said um, – that he would uh, respect me for that and have me try to deal with Mr. X. I just, I'm so, I'm just so happy that Mr. X actually bought it and has it in his possession. And that is a positive. I think that makes me feel good. Yeah, he's on the, spin on the side chat. He said road track is in a 30 day receivership. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the ball's in his court. That's it. Let's see. Heimer is the group that went bankrupt. Then Heimer put it in bankruptcy. JK, let me know tomorrow. 
you're welcome to come down and uh, hang out, meet Narce. So, you know, have some pizza if you want. Just let me know tomorrow. So, I'm trying to think, Marshall, what I'm really curious what's going to happen. I mean, silence might just come down on this thing. We might not hear another thing after tonight about no, it. No, yeah. But yep. I just, uh, I just, like I said, I'm just, um, I'm just happy that he bought it. I'm happy. I know that he got a dynamite deal on it and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not going to say how much I think he got it for, but I think he got it for a really, really good deal. A deal that is literally unbelievable. But, uh, I, I just, <laughs> Yeah, you wonder uh, how he pulled off a deal like that. How because you know, he bought it from the uh, he bought it from the daughter of the guy. Who know, owned it. Yeah, no, no offense, but it must have kind of been a dumbbell, you know. To well, not- well, well, think about it for a second now, right? You got a road track two ten, right? These people put it for sale on the block that they live and parked it across the street. They didn't put it on RV Trader. They didn't put it on Craigslist. They didn't put it on eBay. The only there's only a handful of human beings on this earth that knew about this rig, and it was only the people in that little community, and yeah. that's why he had a, he had a chance to buy it because he heard about it from one of the people that he knows that lives in that area, and uh, or otherwise this rig would have been long gone. Yeah, would have heard about it or seen it. Well, and I've been talking about it for years, though. So. That's it. That's it. Let me just say to Private Dobbs, he's not gifting him a van. He's Mr. X. Mr. X doesn't gift <laughs> anything. Okay, let's get it right. No, I mean, no, Mr. X is not. I'm gonna buy this rig. <laughs> try to buy this rig from Mr. X. But today he officially told me that it wasn't for sale. But he didn't put it out of the realm of possibility that he might it might be for sale. Hi, Sean. Yeah, Mr. X is a nice guy. I he like that. Uh, the, the rig is in limbo right now. He doesn't know what he's going to do with it. He might keep it and just add it to his collection. Who knows what he's going to do? But I'm just glad that he's got possession of it. And until the day that he sells it, and, you know, it's going to be a sad day. If I don't get it, it'll be a really, really sad day for me. A sad day in the in the life of uh, of my life in the search of a rig like this will be a sad day. Okay, but okay, gifting you mean in installments? No, I don't see. I don't think Mister X puts anything on installment. I think it's like I don't think Mister X would be the financial uh, person for that. See, I have no idea. I don't even care about that. That's not my concern. You know. So uh, no, I'm not buying a rig. I'm not buying a rig for Marshall. No, I'm no, no, no. My thing is um, taking care of getting myself on the road. I think, uh, you know, I don't know who it would be. Maybe uh, Norm F. I have no idea. Um, yeah, Johnny Watt said, "Elvis, sell your plasma." <laughs> These people. <laughs> gone, gone down to the blood bank. <laughs> I'm financing my rig one pint at a time. <laughs> uh, see it. These people are these people are something on the but, side. But, that- but Rosie, aren't you really kind of surprised that Mister X Stunned. bought it in the first place and then bought it the way that he bought it? I'm not surprised the way he bought it because he's very slick. But I am surprised that he wanted to get another van, but I think he didn't get it for an eye to pop it. I don't, I don't believe Mr. X has any interest in rolling down the road in a road track two times, okay? Mm. He's got the Great West, right? Right. That's it. You know that. He, oh, probably got, he got a line on Marshall and he probably said, I'm going over there to talk to them. How much do you want for it? Okay, dear. Okay. And gave him an offer on it and they took it. So, 
But I, do I think he's actually going to spend any time in that rig? No, I don't. I don't believe it. I mean, if this rig was in your neighborhood and you saw it on Craigslist for a say you saw it for five thousand dollars, so you so, would jump on it right away. You I would even jump on it right away. I would jump on it right. Pretend I would jump on it. Okay. Pretend I. Yeah, you can't believe the the slim pickings out here right now, Marshall and. Uh, on RVs, it's terrible for Class Bs right now. <clears throat> Let's see. Would Mar Would Elvis consider going back to trucking to earn the money to buy it? Well, I don't think anybody's going to gift it to him. So one way or another, he's going to come have to come across with either payments or cash. So. Oh. <sighs> mm -hmm. I've seen a few on blocks in Camden, New Jersey. I, I, I don't see two tens around. I see one nineties day in and day out, but two tens. No, two tens. I bet if you were to ask everybody in this chat, I bet you there's not one person that's ever been inside of a road Trek two ten of this model. I bet you that the whole audience watching and you probably got 150, 200 people watching now. I'm thinking. Uh, how many you got watching now? Uh, 232 on here. I bet out of the 232 people watching, there's not one person that's ever been inside of a Road Trek 210 of this model. And maybe the majority of the people have never even seen one in real life. I dare to ask that. You know? I agree. I mean, I've never been inside of a 210. Well, I don't know, Odome. I can't say who freaking cares because in this community, at least what's left of remnants, I still say there's a backbone of an RV community in here. There's still people that do enjoy talking about uh, RVs. I think I think Odome and a lot of these new drama people that, that came in, their goal is is to is to purge the RV community out of out of your community. They want to purge us out. We're still here. There's still people watching. It's just that the drama community is domineering, overbearing, and they're trying to purge, purge us out, purge us out of your uh, realm and stuff. And well, you know, you know, I still talk. I still enjoy talking about uh, our being and stuff. And uh, I can't wait in April to get on the road. That's going to be great. Heading south, man. Heading south. Uh, the nice thing about being California, no matter where you are, you don't have to worry about AC uh, on the coast anyway. So, see, I mean, it's inter It's different. It's it's fun to talk about RVs. Um, yeah. I hope it. I hope it comes to pass. I think it would really. I think it make it very interesting. Put the Hershey PA RV show on your list. I absolutely will. Will you be there traveling? Will you be there? That's one of the biggest shows oh, in the country. Yeah, the Hershey PA. I, yeah, I, I I yeah, I would go to that. I'd like to go to the Tampa RV show next year. An RV for thirty five. Never heard anything about RVs interesting in this community. Well, I don't know, Brandon. I don't know. I just think I just think that uh, I think the people that watch me they can't all be drama people. There's got to be RV community people. I know they're out there. A lot of them are scared to come out because of the uh, of the bombardment of the uh, of the drama community that's been overbearing and domineering and trying to take over my genre they've they've they they've came in you know they've invited themselves in to the rv community but they're not part of it they just hate on it that's what i've noticed and it goes to all of them to all of these trolls that hate on rvers they're not rvers themselves like stickers like uh vinny lcd tucker all of them all these people are not rv community but they like to talk about us to make content for the purpose of hate 
but they're not really RVers. They're not even part of the of the community and stuff. And that's what I've noticed was going on on YouTube and stuff. It's all uh, trolls out there trying to hate on us, but they're not really part of us. That's what I've noticed. That's what I've noticed with uh, YouTube. That's the sad thing about it. People hating on us that aren't even part of our community, aren't even part of our world, but they love to hate on us and stuff. And no, I, I don't. I don't, Cindy. I mean, let's uh, honestly. Marshall is a lightning rod of his own doing, but I'm saying I do enjoy talking about RVs. I did say that I would enjoy working and and doing a full restoration. Yeah, boondocking in Guerneville. I'd love to do a full rest. That's all I'm saying tonight. I think it'd be very fascinating if a deal came through. I think that that would be fantastic. I think it would be. Uh, thrilling to see something shake up the community and something new coming i think that would be out of sight the ball is in mr x's court he will decide to do what he wants to do but i can promise you one thing you know, i don't think you'll ever see mr x spend a day inside of a road track 210 to spend a night i don't think it's i, I think he's got it to do a flip and uh i'll be interested in seeing what it what comes of it so i mean i mean if, if this rig is and it's as nice as it, as i say it is with the miles in the air and you saw it in your neighborhood for sale it was right around the corner in santa rosa what would you pay for it Cash. for that rig i'd be willing to pay up i'd be willing to pay uh i'd come up with 13 cash and they would probably grab it you know I might come in and start it. Uh, might start it uh, ten on that. I don't think you're gonna get it for less than that unless you have a dummy that's uh, selling it. But uh, for what you told me earlier today, uh, the, the family would have to be pretty ignorant to not just do a basic idea of what these things go for. But let's suppose they did. Yeah. Uh, there was a YouTube video, one for 95, like I said, nine, depending on condition and mileage, anywhere from nine to 13 for that. If you, if you find one is in, in pristine condition, even over 100,000 miles, even 150,000 miles, mm. I've seen them for 15 to 20,000. 150, you're sort of getting into the red zone of uh, replacements for – um for uh road tracks marshall i say up to 110 120 000 miles that would be it hey savage what's going on that would be it uh okay joe king said if it was an estate sale they probably didn't care well that's a damn shame if people handle their crap like that you know well, see, that's what i try to explain to people is that when you look at a regular vehicle, if you have a, a, a Ford Explorer and it's got 150,000 miles, you're not going to get that much for it. But if you have a real Class B, doesn't matter what year it is, and if it's in good shape and it's got 150,000 miles, a lot of people are looking for rigs $20,000 and under, and they're willing to pay that 20,000 and under price cash because they know how much they are newer. And that's what it boils down to. It, they, they don't, the mileage doesn't hurt a class B. It's the condition. It's the maintenance of it. It's not the year or the miles that would hurt like a regular vehicles. Uh, well, I, I, for me, Marshall, I'll say up to about 120,000 miles. I'll, I'll agree with you. But I think of beyond 120,000 miles, I have to take off a bit for every 10,000 miles on there. I have to I have to lower it by 50 to 1,000 for every 10,000 miles above that. Just in my general buying thing for mileage, because shit starts to go wrong in 150,000 miles in that range, and most people are most people are blowing these things out at 175,000 miles. You'll see them all day. Chris, uh, Chris Diamond had a Chevy Express van that had over a half million miles on it. Well, that's a rarity. That's a rarity. Yeah. 
you know, it's uh, he he got lucky. He had no big big mechanical failure on that, so he's he's lucky. But I'd say the average marshal is probably once you start getting above one hundred twenty thousand miles on these things, then you probably one sixty is about the upper limit. Hey Hazel, how are you? Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what Mr. X does. Okay, you do that, Cindy. That'd be cool. Oh, the Nissan bands in Europe, half a million miles. Wow. Okay. How you doing, Schmiggy? Well, build quality's better. Remember, we're still talking about a 96. There's a big difference between a 96 and what's coming out today of 2000. 18 with all the micro engineering and the and the tolerances are much better than they were even 20 years ago so um you know the one thing that the road track is kind of close to the road track is kind of close to the styling of the rialto i like that they're sleek they're good looking yeah, Mika Reynolds said yes. I said 120,000 miles is going up there. So. <laughs> 120,000 miles for a Chevy 350 engine from a year of 1995. That's not even barely broken in. That's barely, if you add the miles up over all the years, that's not a lot of mileage for the year. Um. It's not really a lot of uh, wear and tear. It's not really a lot of uh, mileage for the year of the vehicle. It's not really a lot. And Chevy 350 engines, like many Dodge and Ford, they're known to go a lot of miles and stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mika Randall said that's how Mr. X got the price down. I agree. He, he, he hammered on the mileage of it, I'm sure. So he probably educated them on the realities of high mileage on RVs. So, you know. All right, Marshall, well, it's getting on to dog farts time for me. So I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm going to pack it in. Uh, Nar saying I got another big day uh, tomorrow. Some you gotta get the you've gotta get the dog fart emblem, put them on your curtains back there. <laughs> I've never never been to dog farts before, so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Marshall, thank you. It's very interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see if uh you get any traction with Mr. X at all. So <laughs> there you go, Nicole. Yeah, dog farts time. So thank you. Thank you also for all of you who tipped at the mods today. It was, uh, they all get a nice, uh, a nice push coming their way. So thank you very much. That was very awesome of all of you. And uh, Marshall, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see how it works out. And, uh, yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for being on the chat. Have a good one.